welcome to another episode of the Weekly Debate Slash Discussion Show, Hashtag Shout, where we cover the news <coughs> week, whether it be entertainment, odd, just downright fucking ridiculous, and of course, we have our Tweets of the Week, and a whole host of other segments that we will get to in due time. However, first allow me to introduce the Weekly Crew as per usual. I am Steve John 3 the producer of the show, and some know me as Boss, Nah. It's really hard to back that statement up with these two. <laughs> and of course, the founder of the show, executive producer of the show. Yeah. I felt I needed to give them a nice little... Like, the retweeted retard. <laughs> I don't get retweeted. Oh, that's true. Oh, but I retweet you sometimes. I'm just a tweeted retard. I, 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 I retweet you sometimes. Replied. <laughs> what? You replied? Yeah, yeah. no. Well, to be fair, I would bother my Richard Dodge anyway. Yeah. He is the suited up Sith. That's me being angry. The suited up Sith, the pirate pimp, the Lord Walker one, Adam Hyder. I am very good, thank you. You actually have a pirate hat on this side. Yeah, I'm wearing my pirate hat. And of course, the maniacal Mark, the patron saint, the socio awkward dictator of DC, the magician of Marvel. He is none other than the leader of the geek realm. Geek King! (coughs) Geek, how are you doing? It's about time we got started. Geek, don't push me. You two have been fucking around <laughs> for half a fucking hour. I, I... I timed! I know not what you talk of. It was five o'clock on the dot when I said, let's get started. <laughs> it's now 5.31. We, we were so not singing Metallica at him. Exit night. And uh, we're going to get sued. Probably. Yeah, tried to do too. Yeah. Nah, fuck him. Anyway. Uh, so... I heard an interesting story once. Yes. Hulk Hogan was an I mean, original member of the time. I did hear that. Yes. Uh, of course. I think that was. I think that was after his, you know, wrestling in front of Elvis. You know. Yeah. But anyway, Adam. Yes. I think it's time Can for that segment you do every week. What? Charge! I got my laptop because you're very that very. Yes. No, I think it's. Oh, geek! What do we call it? Um, I don't know. Oh. Well, uh, Tweets a week. Yes. <laughs> Tweets a week. <laughs> okay, they are definitely trying to put me a laptop. <laughs> was it an iPad or an iPhone? iPhone. iPhone. Before the battery's out. I've just plugged it in. Thank you, Stephen. I plugged it I love you. I'm talking about the yeah. laptop. I plugged it in. Oh, yeah, I moved the table. Tweet of the week! <laughs> Tweet of the week! <laughs> <laughs> Say the fuck. Sorry, we've got boobs. Boobs! At Big E Langston! Yes! Yes! Children are the future, but so are robot companions. And little Bobby can't probably draw my back. Advantage robot companions. Okay. And Geek, this is just for you. We have a double dose of that, Biggie Langston. Yeah. For uh, for some reason, I fear my knee and nudity is better received here in Europe. I may stay a while. <laughs> Our final tweet this week comes from at Heel Ziggler. I can always tell when one of my girlfriends' marriages isn't going to work out. <laughs> and those Did were <coughs> and those were my tweets oh, oui. alright we've got some news here the first one has <coughs> pissed me off to no fucking end oh yes a supermarket chain has withdrawn bags of nuts from sale because they contain nuts Booth's decided to pull its whole hearted roasted monkey nuts from the aisles because its label does not declare it contains peanuts actually needs to do that legally I know it seems stupid, but legally they have to do that. The firm has stores in Lancashire, Cumbria, Yorkshire, Cheshire, and a recently opened brand at Media City UK in Salford. A spokesperson for the company said, Booth is drawing some batches of its whole heart and roasted monkey nuts because the presence of peanuts is not declared on the label. This makes the product suitable for anyone with an allergy to peanuts. One would question why they, um, you know, bought a bag of nuts. Yeah, I know it seems stupid. But it has to be labelled legally, that's why they've done it, so they're actually covering their own ass. I know they are, but... It's yes, it seems stupid, it's and it's yes, it's it's it is stupid, but at the end of the day, you can't get pissed at them for doing what the law tells them. I don't get pissed, I'm not pissed at them! You I'm not pissed at them! I'm pissed at the law! It's a bag of nuts! If you go... First of all, right, about the worst argument I ever heard for something like this, I was arguing this with a guy at a course I was doing, one of these fucking bullshit ones, and, um... I was complaining about this because we're talking about political correctness and like a sensitivity training and shit like that. And I said, it's like, <coughs> it's like when you, the people, you know, it's like uh, peanuts, like bag of peanuts, which says may contain nuts. 
And a guy said, "Well, you know, we've got to have that. How do you know that? How you know how do you know this not got any nuts in?" I went, "Well, you know, because it's a bag of fucking nuts. It'll even say on the bag, like ready salt or peanuts, for example." He said, "I fucking shit you not. You can tell he was from South Stanley." He actually turned around and said, "Well, what if they can't read?" <laughs> of course, genius. They can't read the title, but they'll be able to read small print on the back. Fucking, I, 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 I am still waiting for a justification <coughs> for the government saying, yeah, it has to have, and I, it, I would argue in a lawsuit, if a lawyer was saying it didn't state on the back it contained nuts, my reply would be, excuse it fucking, why does it even play, what does it say on the front? It's ready salt the pay nuts? Fuck you, you lose your case. Cunt wagons. Anyway, moving away from nuts... To James Bond, you know, we're going to be Bond. Saying, British spies could be offered a James Bond style smartphone app after a UK company devised what believes to be the world's first totally secure messaging service. Yeah, the right. secret technology uses complex ciphers to sp- send heavily encrypted messages from one iPhone to another without passing through any central servers. It's being offered straight off the shelf for three pounds ninety nine. Wait, I can get this for three pounds ninety nine. Yeah. I don't know, phone five. Designers are so convinced by its level of security that they have challenged hackers to crack its codes and had an offer and have offered ten thousand pounds prize to anyone who can intercept a message. It is hoped the app designed by the British firm Redact, based in Geneva, could become the latest asset in the world of espionage. The company has already offered its secure messaging service to, uh, for free to MPs and submitted the technology to CS, uh, CESG, the government's National Tre- uh, Technical Authority for Information Assurance, which provides advice on the security of communications and electronic data. This sounds like some sort of a fucking Bond film. Yeah. Where they used to, uh, where they used to get like, yeah. hackers to go and hack into yeah. the databases to see yeah. if they could do it or not. And if anyone won for 50, they'd get it for 50 it, grand. I, and then if the, the, and so it was never done, then one year some kid walks in and does it. Yeah. To me, it almost sounds like a fucking trap for Anonymous. You know what I mean? It, it sounds like the storyline is James Bond goes after Anonymous. <laughs> Which, by the way... I would be surprised. I, 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 I haven't seen. I haven't seen Skyfall, but it wouldn't. Skyfall. Have, but it wouldn't have surprised me if that was the story. Like the bad guy was anonymous. No, bad guys. It's in in Skyfall. I haven't seen it, but I know the plot is that the main bad guy in it yep. is actually a turncoat. Well, there you go. But not like 006. This time yeah. it's all. He doesn't, he's trying to bring it down. Yeah. But a message on the Redact website says, We are confident that the messages you send via the Redact app are completely secure. To prove it, we are offering a standing reward of £10,000 to anyone who has the skills to intercept and decrypt this challenge message, which constantly bounces between two phones in our challenge location. It has. Uh, it is promised to give anyone willing to take on the challenge a head start by giving them the location of the phones. The Redact app is designed so, uh, so many messages... So, so, so any messages both sent and received can be removed from both handsets at the touch of a button with no method of recovery. If one user chooses to erase a message, it will also be eradicated from the sender and recipient's device and apparently deleted forever. You know who this will be perfect for? Yeah. People having an affair. Yes. Think about it. You know, you're trying to send, you're trying to sext with another girl or another guy, whatever your fancy is. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you you know, it, you can do it securely now. Okay. Affairs become so much fucking easier. You know, what I mean? I mean, obviously, I'm not advocating it, but I'm just simply pointing it out. Yeah. You know, so I'm not saying that that let's say makes it a bad thing, but of course, the other problem is when we think about it, that's going to cause issues for us trying to learn the truth about the government. You know, yeah. because obviously, we learn a lot of the big changes which happen within governments. Yeah. Happen because. MPs get caught out on bullshit they say. Yeah. Now it's going to be hard for them to be caught out. But the question is, will Anonymous take up the challenge? I imagine they... Because here's the thing, if a member of Anonymous takes up the challenge, they're going to have to do it without being Anonymous. Yeah. And the other thing is, of course, this is... Pro- this They must look at this and go, this is a trap, if any. Well, that's what I was thinking. It, it, it sounds like a trap, right? Yeah. It sounds like a fucking trap. To be like, oh yeah, we'll give ten grand to anyone who can crack it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but in order to do that, you have to come forward as a hacker. Yeah. Which, if you're not already working for a legal firm, like a, le- a legally uh, yeah. protected kind of firm, yeah, where hacking is part of your job, like security or something, yes, you're fucked. Yeah. 
Because there's no amnesty on this. Yeah. So, so far, it could be a good trap to catch hackers, but at the same time, it's, this app is going to be great for people wanting to have an affair. You know? Oh, you just have one. Oh, if you're in an open relationship, I want to keep all the conversations quiet. Well, that is true. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> dissing the app itself, though. I'm just looking at both sides. Oh, um, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, it sounds to me. Yeah, it sounds like if you know those um, mm-hmm. websites you, you see all the time of like, do you want to get hooked up with someone? Tonight? Oh, yeah. It seems like the ultimate way of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, of a doobie. Now, obviously, uh, moving on. Of course. Uh, and I've just minimised my window rather than close it down. Yay! An injured father who let his nine-year-old son drive his Ferrari has been arrested. I'm not surprised! Mohammed Nis- uh, Nissam uh, was charged endangering the life of a child and allowing a minor to drive and released on bail. Nis- uh, uh, it might be Nisham, actually. Nisham's yeah. wife, Amal, uh, filmed the boy driving the sports car on his ninth birthday two weeks ago with his five-year-old brother in the passenger seat. The video was widely watched on YouTube and created an outrage across India causing police to file charges. India's economic boom has created a class of super rich whose excesses are frequently in the news. Nisham has a tobacco and property business and was 18 cars and is worth around 2.5 million. Yeah. Well, it's, his cars are worth that much. Yeah. Just, alright, police have impounded the Ferrari but will be returned to him in a few days after paperwork for the case has been completed. The boy's parents were unabashed. I'm proud of him. He's been driving since he was five, said his mother. She said the boy has also driven the family's Lamborghini and Bentley and other cars. It was his ninth birthday, and since it was insisting, since he was insisting for months, he allowed uh, we allowed him to drive the Ferrari. He has a cautious, confident driver. It's not used for a child to achieve such a feat at his young age. Beside the fucking point. Yeah. First of all, if you're going to endanger the life of your nine-year-old, don't throw the five-year-old in there as well. You know, first of all, it's just it's not smart gambling. There's no payoff. You might as well just sacrifice one kid. You know, and if he lives, great. And if he doesn't, well, you still got the other one. Yeah. Oh, oh fix my bed. Fuck's sake. I don't know where there's a broken... <laughs> you fucking moron. I wondered why now, I was leaning on my shoulder. Oh, for God's sake. Anyway, the last bit of news, which I'm uh, actually quite interested in this one. Uh, a FTSE, sorry, a FTSE style happiness index that measures the mood of the world on any given day can now be accessed online. Click on... Well, sorry, it says click on. I'm reading this from MSN News. But if you go to this website, you can see a wavy line plotted on a graph that rises and falls in much the same way as... Uh, basically, what this does is this kind of measures the happiness from around, uh, around the world. Uh-huh. Like, how people are feeling and what makes people happy. The da- So, I'm over this website, Hendom, it's called a Hendonometer. Mm-hmm. Daily Happiness Averages for Twitter, Right? This shows how, on average, how happy people are on this scale. Like, happiness average, right? Yeah. So you can actually see the average happiness people experience mm-hmm. on any fucking giving day. Yeah. This is fucking weird. I, how, how do you begin to measure happiness? That's what I don't understand. How many times someone says yay? This is true. <laughs> but what I want is, like, if, we, if we're going to get into this territory now, I want to see a happiness test. I want to see people being able to take a test to show how happy they are on a fucking universal scale. You know, I don't think, I, I mean, I'm going to do a quick Google search to see if there's such thing as a happiness test. <laughs> what are you giggling at? <laughs> so fair enough. Uh, okay, I'm not going to take a test that's been hosted on Oprah.com. Oh, do it. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, psychology, uh, this is a psychology website uh, that has a happiness test. Uh, take the test. Um, okay, let me just open this up in a couple of pages because there's three of us. Okay, so uh, let's have a quick look at this. Okay, um... Right, so it's got a few questions. Uh, the, you go from one to five. One is most of the time, and five is almost never. Okay. Uh, okay, so everybody, uh, I can find the good in uh, even the most disagreeable of people. Uh, four. Four? Geek, what are you reckon? Three. You reckon a three? Okay, and uh, I reckon I reckon about a uh, three. The same well. one, right? Yeah, it's sometimes just making, just making sure. Yeah, even if I'm uh, even if I'm sure about my ultimate choice, I still ask others for advice before making an important or risky decision. Uh, about two. So often. 
which jump is which? Well, I said one most of the time and five almost never. Oh, fuck. Alright, so often was the first one and rarely the other one? Yeah. Right. Uh, Keith, what about yourself? Was the question again, sir? Yeah, well, uh, when you're not, sh- when you're, sh- even when you're sure about your ultimate choice, you still ask other people for advice first. Often. Often, yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, it's often as well. Okay. Um, I can find something positive in even the most difficult situations. Uh, uh, four. Four. Okay. So rarely, yeah. Okay. Keep worry about yourself. You know what? I'm going to have to put Tumblr down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, can you... Can, uh, you can find, positive, find something positive in the most difficult situations. Often. I try my best to do yeah. it, don't I, you know? Often. Me, I'm the one who does it in this something. group. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Alright. Um, I actually keep in touch with friends and family. Well, I live with you, so... Well, yeah, but you well, actively try and keep in touch with people outside of you. Your friends, for instance. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, they look for you more than the way around. Four. Oh, four. Four. Keep away with yourself. Probably five, too. Five. Ah, Base five, four. Numbers mixed up. I am not good at math. It's not math. So is it four? Or, so is it all the time or never? All the time. Two. Right. I'm used to five being the best option and one being all right, the best option. Right. Just go most of the time, often, sometimes, rarely, almost never. All right, right. That makes more sense, right, guys? That's English, not maths. Okay. I feel lonely. All the so lonely. Time. <laughs> I miss the lonely. Geek. Geek. Oh, by my I'm music. Oh. Geek. Uh, often. Uh, I feel all the time. Even when I'm here. Yep. Disappoints me in the way. Uh, when times get tough, I turn to friends and family for support. All the time. Actually, sometimes. Geek. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, for me, probably, I would say often. Because I don't like to, but I do. When I found myself overwhelmed with stress, I shut down completely. I'm just going to quickly answer this for myself and say it all the time. All the time for me too, dude. Thank you. And Geek? <laughs> Never, man. I don't ever shut myself down when I'm stressed. Okay, uh, I keep... How stressed do I get? I keep my problems to myself. Uh, often. And Geek, what about yourself, dude? Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm going to say uh, sometimes. I'll, I'll say rarely. But because I only open up to certain people, uh, and only certain times. Right, when I'm feeling down, I remind myself to focus on the good things in life instead of the bad. Yeah, because yeah. you had a bad day. <laughs> I'm going to put myself rally. And you, geek. Well, uh, let's go with um, sometimes again. Sometimes. I hope this like the results are awesome. Like they'll probably pay off. Uh, when I have a difficult problem, I try to look at it from a different angle in order to come up with a solution. Sometimes, like from behind. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you reckon, Geek? You try to tr- adjust your point of view to see if it works? I adjusted her point of view. Yeah. So, <laughs> we put and that did work. Yeah. <laughs> do we put sometimes? Uh, yeah, I go with sometimes. Yeah. Big A. <laughs> I have money in my hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have 50 pence in my hand. Uh, okay, I refuse to give up no matter how tough things get. Never gonna give you up. Never mm-hmm. gonna let right. you down. You just gonna break the Most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Geek. <laughs> um, I refuse to give up. Uh, it's often. I don't. You know, it's very yeah. rarely I give up on something. I don't give up ever. Unless there's no future. That's no right. step backward. <sighs> no give you up. Okay. Um, We're a quarter okay. of the way through, boys. We'll get there. I promise we'll get there. Okay. 47 okay. questions in 20 minutes. Well, yeah, we've already done some of them, though. We've done 11 of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Strongly agree, agree. Yeah, yeah. In the middle, disagree, strongly agree, right? So you know what I'm talking about? No, not one clue. Strongly agree, agree. Yeah. All right, so we're doing agree now. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I find it's better not to get my hopes up that way I won't end up disappointed. Strongly agree. Okay, Geek? Um, somewhat. Somewhat agree. I'll put the yeah, same thing. <laughs> okay, I believe that I, uh, I believe that what can go wrong... I believe in the thing of love! Just a little bit of my heart! I believe what can go wrong will go wrong. Strongly agree. <laughs> geek! Yeah, um, I disagree. Disagree! 
Yeah, I think uh, somewhat, because it's possible. It doesn't mean it will. No matter what life throws at me, I believe that I can deal with it. Let me disagree for you. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, what about you? For me, uh, I agree. I think I know most things. Uh, I uh, strongly agree. Fuck that, the world can't kill me. Um, if I ever need help, I believe that my friends or family will be there for me. I agree. Guess what, Adam? What? I'll be there for you, because you're there for me too. Um, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. We all agree. Okay, I'm better, I'm better off looking after myself because I can't rely on others to do so. Somewhat agree. And Geek? Yeah, somewhat. I'm going to put uh, agree. Okay, being myself guarantees that people will dislike me. Agree. <laughs> Geek? Yeah, agree. Uh... I, I put uh, agree as well. There's a reason I have a small yeah. group of yeah. friends. Nothing of value can be <laughs> nothing of value can be learned from failure. Disagree. Disagree, geek. Strongly disagree. So disagree, and I strongly disagree as well. Because we know better than that, don't we? Oh, oh. Okay. Now again, agree yeah. to disagree. There's no point in maintaining close friendship. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing. Don't want to agree. Lasts geek. Forever. Forever. Geek? Uh, I somewhat agree with this. Yeah, I strongly disagree. Okay, I know how to calm myself down and relax when my life gets too hectic. So what? I know no, how to calm, calm myself down. And no, I strongly disagree. Yeah? <laughs> Geek? So I strongly agree. Nice work. I strongly disagree. Well, it's easy for me to calm myself down. Some people are doomed to live an unhappy life. There's nothing they can do to change it. Sorry, what? Some people so, are doomed to have an unhappy life and there's nothing you can do to change it. Disagree. Good. Geek? I'm glad to see you have that outlook on life, dude. Geek. That outlook yeah, has been beaten out for me. I strongly disagree. They kicked my ass when I said that, so apparently. I think that it's important to maintain a sense of humour when life is particularly rough. Mm. Somewhat agree. Geek? Strongly agree. I strongly agree as well. Gotta look at the bright side, Yeah. Uh, most, no way, most so when I finally saw the bright side, it was nothing but blind. <laughs> most people can't be trusted. Agree. Dick. Some more. Uh, I put disagree. Um, a person who does a favour for me without being asked probably has an ulterior motive. Somewhat agree. In my Dick. experience, I have an ulterior motive. Somewhat. I put agree. Me usually do. Okay, given the choice, I think that the majority of people would choose to do good rather than evil. Disagree. Geek? What do you reckon? We'd rather do good than over evil, right? Yeah. The majority of people. Majority? Yeah. Yeah, disagree with that one. I agree, actually. I, I think uh, most people do act good rather than evil. Um, I think that almost everyone lies on their tax returns. <laughs> Geek? Mm, somewhat. I put disagree. I don't think people. I don't think the majority of people want to fuck with the tax man. The IRS. I believe it's uh, last few. Well, we've passed the halfway mark. Okay. When times get tough, I'm pretty sure very few people, if any, will come to my aid. Uh, disagree. Oh God. Oh whoa! Positive. I like oh, it. I have you. I have. Geek. Gary or ad ads in the sky. Beth, um, Geek, of course. Geek, when times get tough, you're pretty sure that your friends and family come to your aid. Um, agree. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, so I'm pretty sure very few people, if any, will come to my aid. Oh, if, well, uh, no way will come to my aid. No, few people. No, I don't think I've got people come to my aid. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I actually somewhat agree, because very few people would. But those few people I admire most. This is a doggy dog world. Anyone will backstab you to get to the top. <laughs> what? This is a dog eat dog world. Anyone will backstab you to get to the top. Agree. Pay attention to the show. I am. And Geek, what, Geek what about you? <laughs> what do you reckon? Doggy dog world? Yep. Of course it is. Yeah, of course it fucking is, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, there's no need to plan ahead when taking risks that I've successfully dealt with before. 
Okay, Geek, you agree? What Risks. about you? Do you need a plan if you've already took them? If, I, oh, if I've already taken them? Yeah. I overthink everything. Even if you've already took the risk Even involved. if I've done it, Stro- I Okay, <laughs> so strongly disagree, Adam. Yes. Alright, I strongly disagree as well. Okay, so... Yeah, I've done it before, let's go! Somehow <laughs> I feel like compared to most people, my chances of getting seriously ill or hurt are pretty slim. So compared to the people, <laughs> your chances are slim. Chances but your chances, you have two walking slim. injuries. Geek? I, I would say that my chances are very slim getting injured compared to people. So strongly agree or agree? Uh, great. Okay. My, well, uh, compared to used to, I'm a I'm a medical genius. If I take time to do my work well, I don't need to check it over for mistakes. Disagree. Geek. I somewhat agree with that. It, when I'm writing, I have at least seven editors. So if I'm confident in it. So I'll I disagree. Just go over yeah. it. I would qu- I would only quit my job if I already found another one to replace it. Strongly agree. I agree. And I strongly agree. I've been there. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's better to just leave a problem alone, it'll work itself out. Wait, Maria. <laughs> Maria! <laughs> yes, agree. No. Okay, Strongly so, or just disagree? Disagree. I tend to just Geek? collapse into myself. Uh, what's this? Let the problem go. Yeah, just ignore it. It'll go. It'll sort itself out. That never happens. Let's disagree. Let's Str- uh, disagree. Yeah. And I strongly disagree. You should never just let a problem lie. I tend to go for extremes, I've noticed. Um, okay, as long as I go with my gut in a situation, nothing bad will happen. Strongly disagree. Geek. My gut wants to kill me. Agree. Agree. Yeah. Uh, I go with somewhat. Uh, I refuse to take my problems too seriously. Disagree strongly. Geek. <laughs> I disagree, disagree so strongly, strongly that I reverse puberty for a brief Geek. moment. Uh, I refuse to take my problems seriously. Yeah, you know me. Everybody's yeah. a laugh, right? Yeah. Uh, I strongly disagree because I go batch. I fucking know you two do. I'm like, oh, I do it, I do it. Because you've seen me. Okay, we're oh, almost there. Oh, here we go. Right, okay. Let's answer it. You've got to pay attention to this one, Funk, because which answer suits you best? Okay, you are looking for a job. You find an ad in the newspaper in which a well known company seeks someone to fill the position of your dreams. The qualification requirements match yours almost exactly, although there are a couple of skills that you're lacking. You submit your application or are invited to an interview. How would you feel about your chances? I have absolutely no doubt I'll get the job. I feel pretty sure that I get it, but believe there is a slight chance it'll not work out. I keep my hopes up, but prepare myself for a potential refusal. Consider my chances of getting the job are slim. I consider it a lost cause. Someone more qualified is bound to apply. One before the end. Okay, Geek. Second answer. Second answer. I reckon mine's keep my hopes up. So I'm third. Okay. You're going on a two-week vacation to one of the sunny states. Woohoo! While preparing your luggage, you have no doubt that you'll have a perfect weather and pack only clothing for sunny days. You have little doubt that you'll have mostly nice weather, but pack some stuff for poor conditions just in case. Expect more or less nice weather, but make sure you have things for an odd bad day. Expect mostly bad weather, but pack for good and bad days. Or assume you'll have miserable weather and wonder why you should even bother packing like clothing. The one before the end. <laughs> Geek. Second one again, mate. I'm actually the second one myself. I'm going to start numbering them. One. I am technically. All right. A lot of time, one five. Though, I have to admit, a lot of time, I am one, but I yeah. would generally do number two. Yeah, so we're, we're just going to one to five, right? Especially if it's Florida. Yeah. After ending up single once again. Sorry, Geek. <laughs> a friend decides to fix you up on a blind date. She states with absolute self assurance that it's a match made in heaven. How'd you react? One, wouldn't even bother going because it'll end up terribly disappointing. Two, wouldn't expect anything to come out of it, but go anyway. Three, don't get your hopes up too high, but give it a sincere try. Four, definitely look forward to it, but wouldn't assume that the person is the one simply based on your friend's opinion. Or five, to be totally excited, but really look forward to meeting your dream date. What was number two again? Uh, wouldn't expect anything to come out of it, but go anyway. Yeah. Okay, geek. <laughs> geek. <laughs> Sorry, I was like the way it was the look of Funk's yeah. face when you said it. Geek. Uh, I would. I wouldn't get my hopes up uh, high, but I'd give it a, a sincere try. Yeah. I'm just going for one. And then you know what I do? Yep. Bang yeah. anyway. I, I just wouldn't go, so Really? Yep. Yeah. Thirty-nine. Okay, you come to you come home to find an urgent message from your best friend asking you to call him as soon as possible. How'd you react? One. Your boss, what the fuck's up? Calmly dial the number expecting to hear some good news. Calmly dial the number, wondering if it's good or bad. Get a little nervous when calling, wonder if it's good or bad. As I, I wonder if it's bad news. Get very nervous and call, attes- anticipating bad news, and panic and call them assuming that something terrible has happened. Okay, uh, Geek? 
Uh, I number two. I can't. Okay. Be, uh, can't number, really do it. And wonder which one it was. Uh, number five for me. It's you. I am. I am a paranoid motherfucker. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, ooh, so close to the end. I think this is sitting on the last page here. Okay, your partner is an hour late, which almost never happens. Which of these is more? Which of these are you most likely to do? One, panic, running different possible catastrophic scenarios in your mind. Two, become very anxious, assume that something bad may have happened. Three, become somewhat anxious and wonder if something serious has happened. Four, become slightly anxious, but assume that most likely nothing has happened. Or five, assume that she was delayed by something and not even worry. Three. Good geek. What do you reckon, Geek? Yeah. Two. Uh, four, sorry. Four. I'm, uh, number one. Right out of my head. I'm number one. Of course you are. Okay. Hey, I'd, I've literally had, just had this recently. Yeah. Where I was sitting there going, yeah, she's Leah. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Three deserving employees are lined up for a promotion. You are one of them. Other things being equal, you are. Are you ready? One. Absolutely certain you'll be promoted. Two. Pretty sure that you'll be promoted. Three, hopeful that like you'll be promoted, but assume it not, don't assume it's a done deal. Four, doubtful you'll be promoted. Or five, absolutely certain you won't be promoted. Uh, probably four. Four, geek? Four. When it comes to work, I'm very doubtful. Sure. I'm actually two. What, certain? Yeah, pretty sure, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Um, I was in that situation. Hang on. 42, uh, one of your close friends goes bankrupt because of some poor judgment calls in their past. It's okay, boss, it's okay. He feels doomed to a life of poverty and misery. What do you think? One, I hate to admit it, I hate to admit it, but I agree with them. Life's just one disappointment after another, so they might as well accept their fate. Two, while the chances of them recovering from this are slim, there might still be a little bit of hope. Three, you never know what can come out of a bad situation. Hopefully my friend learned an important lesson. Four, mistakes happen, they'll probably learn a valuable lesson and work things out. Or five, they can definitely learn something from this experience and work it out. Everything happens for a reason. And, and every time someone says everything happens for a reason, I want to beat them to death. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, you say everything happens for a reason, eh? <laughs> no, I'm just... Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yo, Fong, which one is it? Um... What do you reckon? I remember. That's why you should pay attention. I was paying attention. <laughs> he was. It's just, I even I forgot right. this one. So basically, you agree with them. Life's a dis- one disappointment after another. The fucked. Three. You reckon three? For you geek. Uh, what did they do? We went bankrupt. Oh, uh, three. Okay. Uh, for me, I reckon it's about four. It's about four-ish. Uh, right, you're in a train... You said there. <laughs> you're in a train station. A young man of average appearance approaches you and explains that he needs to buy a ticket to go to City XYZ. He is holding some money and says he has $27 and that the ticket costs 29 He asks you if you can give him the remaining $2. <clears throat> what do you do? Do you give him the $2 he needs to go home without having any doubt he's telling the truth? Do you give him the money but suspect that he's lying? Offer to go with him to pay for the ticket, this way you can make sure he's not lying. Or assume that he is a panhandler trying to deceive me and treat him as I normally would when I meet one. Uh, two. Two, geek? Two. Okay, I go one. I, I like to assume the best of people. Yeah, you're paranoid. Yep, we <laughs> in it. This is why psychologists don't like me. And last page. Are you ready, guys? You have a friend to whom in the past you lent some money. Not a ridiculous amount, but it wasn't peanuts either. Uh, but of course they had to return it because you didn't write down the fucking bag. They were peanuts. Anyway. They were, they were in a bad financial situation back then. It took a while before you got your money back. You've learned recently that your friend is in need again. And even though they didn't ask you for a loan, it's clear that your help would be greatly appreciated. So, you offer to lend them the amount needed without thinking twice. You hesitate a little bit, but offer to lend them the money anyway, knowing that eventually you'll get it back. You lend them the money, uh, if she asks for it, but ignore the fact that you might not get it back. You'd reluctantly lend the money, uh, but doubt when you'll, if you'll ever get it back. Or refuse to lend any money at all, because chances are you'll never get it back. Two. Okay, geek. Four. Four. Uh, I'm going for about two as well. Um... Okay, you are newly promoted to find yourself in charge of several people. A couple of weeks later, one of your subordinates, someone whom you had occasionally socialised with, asks you and your partner over for dinner. What do you do? Refuse the invitation, You just try, they're just trying to get a favour. Accept the invitation, but assume that they're trying to get on your good side. Accept the invitation, but suspect that a little buttering up is going on. Accept with pleasure, but have slight doubts about the motive. Or accept with pleasure without any second thoughts. 
Okay, kijk. Slight buttering. What? Slight buttering up. No, okay. I'm going with one. <laughs> well, assume that they were after something. Yeah. <laughs> and generally, fuck you, I'm not going to your house. Second to last question here. On your way back from a visit, from some distance away, you accidentally forgot your wallet in a gas station washroom along the way. It contains all your credit cards, driver license, insurance information, a small amount of money, as well as your address and phone number. You turn to the washroom and half an hour later, but the wallet is gone. Which would you do? Assume that someone took it with the intention of returning it to you, so you simply wait and don't even bother to report the lost credit cards. Assume that someone took it with the intention of returning it, but report the lost credit cards just in case. Think that someone might have stolen it and immediately report your lost credit cards with the slight hope that it will be returned. Assume that most likely someone has stolen it and immediately report the lost credit cards with almost no hope that it will be returned. Or assume that someone has stolen it, immediately report the credit cards lost with absolutely no hope it will ever be returned. Four. Four, Geek. I don't know, I honestly faced that, let me read that. <laughs> okay. I know the, the setup. I phased out halfway through the answers, that's yeah. all. I didn't mean to do it. Okay, it just okay, well, first of all, would you report your credit cards lost? Probably not straight away. Right, but would you eventually? Eventually. And would you assume that it's been stolen, that you'll never get it back, or that there might be a hope? <laughs> it's never given back that one. Right, that sounds like uh, five then. There you go. Right, there you go. Uh, I'm going to say five. <laughs> and last question, guys. When you're in a car, do you wear a seatbelt? Every time, most of the time, sometimes, rarely, never. Every time. Every time. Geek? Actually, most of the time, because sometimes I, like, if I'm going a short yeah. distance, I won't bother. Okay, let's get our results here. <clears throat> and I will be linking this to uh, in the description of the video. Okay, so Adam. Mm-hmm. Okay. No str- okay, I want to love about this, right? Below, it says here, below you can find the various factors that contribute to your optimism and pessimistic outlook classified as strength, potential strength, or limitations. Strengths. None were detected. Potential strength. You generally feel loved and supported by your social network, but you are somewhat cynical. Your limitations. You are a pessimistic person. Your outlook on life isn't very hopeful. And you do not possess very good coping skills. Thank you, Edna. I don't need to go see my clinical psychologist. (laughs) (laughs) Improvement. Uh, uh, Improve those coping skills. The better equipped you are dealing with stress, the more optimistic your outlook. So there you go, Adam. Uh, What do you think about that? Yep. Okay. (laughs) Geek. Yo. You possess good coping skills. Of course I do. Uh, you fall in the mid-range between optimism and pessimism. Your outlook on life is fairly hopeful, but you are somewhat cynical. Of course I am. Limitations, you do not feel loved and supported by your social network. Well, no, have you seen my social network? Oh, God, here comes mine. Are you ready? You, you possess good coping skills. Yeah, you beat yourself up. Your outlook on life is fairly hopeful. You are somewhat cynical. You are a pessimistic person, and you do not feel loved and supported by your social network. Well, have you seen your social network? Jesus. <laughs> Uh, oh, Vincent Myers uh, wished The Rock happy birthday via Twitter. Oh, yeah, it's Rock's birthday. Today. Happy birthday, Rock. No, uh, happy birthday, Dwayne. Happy oh, birthday. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Really, yeah. I mean that. I mean that respectfully. Right! You know, you know, uh, well, you know Adam and I came across with the pessimistic in that. Mm-hmm. There's only one thing that can cheer us up. Boobs. Entertainment news? Oh, yeah, we can do, we can do that first if you want. Uh, comic news. As well, it's free comic book day on Saturday. It is! Go to your local comic store, support your local comic store by picking up free comic books on Star Wars Day, May the 4th be with you. So, Geek, you got some entertainment news. Yeah, we're going to kick off this right with some comic news. Okay, okay, then let's hear what we've got. There's been a lot, hasn't there? Oh, there's been a lot. C2E2, the Chicago Comic Con, happened last weekend, obviously just after we uh, went on air. Yeah. Um, so here we go with some news that came out of that. The long anticipated massively multiplayer online action RPG, Marvel Heroes, yeah. creeps ever closer to release, and the team from Gazillion Entertainment was on hand at C2E2 2013. You're welcome. <laughs> To help push close, push uh, help push close the already narrow gap between comic fans and gamers. Hosted by Gazillion community director Stephen Stephen Reed, the panel consisted of Marvel Heroes lead and Diablo One and Two creator David Bravik, marketing VP Leo Oblin and produ- uh, uh, Olaib, sorry, and producer Matt Group. Wait, Group. Yeah, right. Uh, it seems like a weird <laughs> finish, like last name. Uh, kicking off, kicking it off with an eighteen twelve overture score video featuring a bunch of splashy in-game superhero action. Read the, then shared the meaning of Marvel Heroes, a massively multiplayer online action RPG that's free to play. Nice. So, not like DC Universe where you had to buy a subscription at first and then eventually it came on free to play, no. and not like DC Universe where to get all the extra bonuses, yeah, 
you've got to go and subscribe. No, this one is free to play. Alright. Wrapped around the core that is Marvel Comics. Alright. Before opening the floor, the questions re in it, it reiterated to the audience that early access, so you used to may want to pay attention to this. Yes. Uh-huh. Early access to the game starts May 28th, with right. launch being June 4th. However, it was announced that a special open beta in honour of Iron Man 3 will run from May 3rd to 5th, and for that weekend only, the three starter characters will be will instead be Black Widow, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and Hulk, otherwise known as the Marvel, the Marvel multi, um, uh, movie universe's Avengers with the missing Hawkeye. Yes, I know. A fan e- from uh, eager for May third asked if those special starter characters would relock with everyone a- uh, for everyone after the weekend. Readmitted that they will sadly. Yeah. The next fan asked for playable villains. Burke said he he gets that question a lot, and all he can say is that it sounds like fun. Yeah. Just... Yeah. A backer of the raging Cajun asked if Gambit would be playable. Reed said. That for now he's just an NPC, a non-playable character. Yeah. Would in-game costumes keep up with the changes in the comics? Brovik, uh, Brovik was excited to reveal that the help that they have already implemented some of the Marvel now costumes in game. In game, mm-hmm. worked with Marvel to develop the 360 degree look, and the founders packs of Marvel now costumes is on sale now. Uh, never satisfied. The next fan asked how many characters there will be in all. Marvel Reed revealed that. They have access to all. You ready? Yeah. Eight thousand plus characters in the Marvel universe, so they will keep adding to the game. How many times the ultimate power pack can be stacked? Unlimited for now. Yeah. Uh, after accidentally revealing, uh, re- re- referencing the Flash, a questioner from another universe asked if player character movement speed can be adjusted, and that if if there is an in-game auction house. We advise him to pump up that stat to get that effect. And Brevik pointedly, uh, pointedly stated that there will be no real money auction house, though there might be one someday using in-game currency. Makes sense. Is there going to be a new story added to the game someday? Yes, just like other MMOs, we can and will add more story can- content to the game. A Mac version? Brevik proclaimed a Mac guy, prom- pro- proclaimed Mac guy promised that it is in development and coming soon. More special sales at the St. Patrick's Day Hulk event, yes. What about characters like Kane, Beta Ray Bill, and Re- or Rescue that share powers but are distinct people? Will they be in game? With this question, the panel was visibly distressed. Reed shared that there was a hotly debated subject in the office, and for now, it is decided that the game is really about the powers being different and outside of a special skin or dialogue for the original character. They probably wouldn't be in the game. The rule is that the costumes won't have special powers, so that every player won't be dressed the same because they have to be able, they have to be to win. Mm-hmm. Will there be support from streaming the software in the game? Game the panel couldn't confirm. Right. Available via Steam? Uh, Steam? Yes, it's in discussion. Who are the next uh, new characters? The panel could only reveal that they will be interesting. Mm-hmm. Age of Ultron for the end game content? Maybe. There's a good idea, but Ultron is not in the game for now. Support for game pads. Brevik shot this idea down. The game is just not ve- playable that way. Like, like in the situation how changing FPS games are on consoles without mouse aiming. How powerful do people's PCs need to be to play the game? Running on a modified Unreal 2 engine, Marvel Heroes should play fine on a five-year-old machine. So you're sorted then, boss. Yeah. Lastly, the loneliest gamer on Earth asked if he could play through the game by himself. Reese said he could have been wanted... This is a, this was a new kind of uh, MMO. No fetch collection quests. No impossible to beat solo bosses. Read and over, uh, over thank people for coming out and invite them to take uh, one or all the te- of the triptych of posters drawn by J. Scott Coward to celebrate the launch of the game. Uh, it looks interesting. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, if you want more details, I believe it's MarvelHeroes.com. Yeah. Uh, we will check the link before uh, before that comes up. Yeah. Um, but with this and the release of, and, and the announcement of Batman Ori- Arkham Origins coming, could we should got to be announced on here. Good thing you mentioned that. I have some news. Go ahead. 
Kevin Conroy will not be starring as Batman. Yeah, I heard that as well. Because, obviously, it's a younger Batman. Mm-hmm. Batman, I tell you, uh, this is a report from gamesradar.com. Yeah, who got the official, who got all the early news as well. Exactly. This. Batman's had plenty of performance behind the mask, but for the generation that grew up on Batman the Animated Series, none are more beloved than the voice actor Kevin Conroy, of course. Um, basically, uh, Interactive has decided to move on for Batman Arkham's uh, Origins for a younger Bruce Wayne. Um, I don't believe... They, they haven't announced who it is. They haven't announced yet. Yeah, uh, All they've said is that Conroy isn't there, Hamill won't be returning as a Joker, yeah. Paul Dini, the writer of the animated series and the re- latest Arkham games... And Rocksteady themselves have all departed from the Arkham games, so good luck whoever's got to follow these fuckers. Oh, do you, do you think there's anyone that you know? I mean, for me, I wouldn't mind hearing Chris Sabat have a go at it, the voice of Vegeta and Piccolo and mm-hmm. so many others. I wouldn't mind him having a shot at it, because he's a voice actor. I'm sure you could cope with a decent voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other news. Um, not to, this one I'm interested. Uh, as to which is basically a British supermarket owned by Walmart, has uh, done another cut of £50 of the price of a Wii U, of the Wii U. Now, the Wii U was for selling at £249, and they dropped the price by 50 quid in early March. Um, however, they've done it again, another 50 quid slash, bringing it now, the price down to £149 um, to try and get sold. Um, it's un- According to the website, it's unclear if the price cuts will be permanent or simply limited time offers for the upcoming UK bank holiday weekend, with the Walmart subsidiary currently offering 33% of the regular price of all Wii consoles. Uh, the price reductions coming at a time when Nintendo is struggling to hit the Wii U sales targets with company president Satoru, uh, sorry, uh, Satoru Iwata stating this week, we have not been able to so- uh, s- uh, we have not been able to solidly communicate the project value of Wii U to our customers yet, which has been a grand challenge for us. Uh, some of the myths on the side that Wii U is just Wii with a pad for games, and others even consider Wii U gamepad as a peripheral device connectable to the Wii. We feel Nintendo is currently sending out messages to... Sorry, uh, we feel deeply responsible for not having tried hard enough to have consumers understand the product. So basically, their marketing has been completely fucking shit. Pretty much. Um, it, they, they haven't done a decent enough job with it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the website, one which I'll be reading after the show. Uh, they've got uh, a, 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 something about the 50 most important games of all time. I'll go to give that a read, maybe come back with, to it next week. Yeah, yeah. But I'll give that a read off the show. So, um, um, more entertainment news. Yeah, more on the Marvel Heroes. Uh, it's marvelheroes.com. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, founder packs are available. Um, these are the ones you'd have to buy. Indoors, yeah. uh, indoors, and you'd have to buy it for. Um, you know, if you wanted extra boosts before you came in, uh, for instance, uh, there's a there's three packs available so far. One for nineteen pound, one for uh, sorry nineteen dollars, uh, twenty dollars, one for sixty dollars, and one for two hundred dollars. Wow, which is their best value one. Better fucking be. Uh, you get heroes, you get costumes, in-game currency, in. Um, Early access days, exclusive costumes, exclusive enha- uh, enhanced costume, one hour XP boost, and item find posts. Now here's boosts, sorry. So here's the thing. Uh, in, your, in your $20 one, yep. it's one hero, two costumes. Right. You know, uh, in, your, in your $60, it's four heroes, eight costumes. But for your, here's the thing I don't like about this. Uh-huh. If you've got $200 to spare... Mm-hmm. Yes. And you're gonna throw it into the whole, and you're gonna throw it into this, mm-hmm. right? Yes. You're gonna, you know, two hundred dollars. Fuck it, I'm gonna buy the, the the Marvel Heroes Ultimate Pack. Yeah, yeah. You get all the costumes and all the heroes. What's the fucking point of playing the game for? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But you know that's just how some things work. Yeah. Um. So they are available for you. Uh, I, personally, I won't be able to play this game until I get a PC. Yeah. Or a laptop. Um, I'm sure, though, if Funk goes to MarvelHeroes.com, I'm on it. you will be able to sign up to the beta, the closed beta, okay. for this weekend, and maybe you can have a blast and tell us what it's like next week. I'll have a go. If you accept it, of course. And, of course, it's always you as well, boss, if you feel yeah. like it. Oh, I mean, it sounds like a damn good game to uh, try out, mm-hmm. you know. Right, on to D- DC comic book news. Mm-hmm. The Trinity War... This is going to be the big thing in DC this year. This is all three 
Well, it's not even all three. This is the Road to the Trinity War has been all the Justice League teams mm-hmm. from the New Fifty Two fighting each other. Now, this is the Justice League Dark, Justice League International, and Justice League of America, and I believe Justice League as well. They're all fighting against each other on the road to Trinity War. Trinity War is then going to lead to a massive fight. So here's what came out of it. Trinity War, world's greatest, most dangerous, and freakiest. In a fresh interview with BuzzFeed, writers Jeff Johns and Jeff and Jeff Lermy, together handling the Trinity War event across the titles Justice League, Justice League of America, and Justice League Dark, so international is not in it, in July and August 2013, talked a little about the motivation for the crossover and teased some of the possible outcomes. Yeah. The setup of the crossover has already been seen, and the very impetus of the Justice League of America's creation, they were made to take down the Justice League. Now, the way they did this is they, they, paired, they decided, well, who can take down who? They had Hawkman join the group. They had Catwoman to take down Batman. There was lots and lots of um, interesting parents. Yep. So, but... Let's, so we'll continue. They were made to take down the... Uh, just, in ca- just in case, John says, this Trinity War is really an event that forces the Justice League of America to become aware of that plan and take on the Justice League. He continued, they don't necessarily want to go to war with the original League, but they certainly want a safety net just in case. So how does Justice League Dark get involved in the seemingly two-sided war? Uh-huh. Justice League Dark, for those who don't know, and if I can remember this correctly, is John Constantine... Um, I believe Martian is a them. I think Martian might have been brought into Justice League of America. Uh, um, John Constantine, Satana, and uh, Swamp Thing okay. was brought in. Yeah. And this is all essentially going to lead down to because they brought Pandora into the DC universe, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Um, as the mystery red hooded woman that you saw in every single, uh, in every comic of the original Fifty Two. Yeah. Yeah. Um. LeMay had to be rain coy up for now, but does mention that the war kicks off in earnest because of a death in the first issue of the crossover. It's always nice to know that they're killing off someone else off now. Yeah. It's hard to explain the actual plot mechanics of how they get involved without spoiling things, but some of the mysteries around the death in the first issue need their expertise. Uh, Dark, is kind, Dark is kind of dragged into it unwillingly. There's a reason they, beco- they come into the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeMay, well, uh, LeMay pointed out that both Constantine and the House of Mystery are ho- heavily involved. As for the actual Trinity described in the, tri- in the title Trinity War, John says all may not be as it seems and the real war may not be between the Trinity of Just Leagues. The top line is this is a war between the world's greatest heroes, the world's most dangerous heroes, and the world's freakiest heroes. W- but the mystery within that is what does Trinity War mean? And once that's revealed, it changes the DC Universe in a big way, says Johns. He also teased there was something that happens with the Trinity of Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. And talk of that... You have this Trinity of Sin. You're going to love this, right? Yeah. The Trinity of Sin, which is Pandora. Right. The Phantom Stranger, who's revealed to be Judas. Of course. <laughs> and the question. Oh, yes. Because the question questions everything. Yes. So which Trinity is truly at war is still to debate. John's also teased that, like most crossovers, not all the characters, and certainly not all the relationships, may make it through intact. In particularly, one high-profile relationship and uh, relationship end is now a when, not an if. Yeah. My money, my money's going to Wonder Woman and Superman. Yeah. He does continue to say the thing about Wonder Woman and Superman is when their relationship ends, it's going to end badly. Yeah. Is no, there is no good way for this one to end. I, yeah, I'd say there was no way to end that one. Goodness. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> What are you going to do? It's going, be, it's going to be basically the plot of my super ex-girlfriend. Yes. So it's the problem being is your Superman. Yes. <laughs> Quick uh, note, by the way. Just want to wish someone a happy birthday. Batman! Batman makes his first appearance in episode... Uh, sorry, in, uh, edition number 27 of Detective Comics in May, I believe, 1939. I believe so, yes. So it's actually Batman's birthday. Nice. So happy birthday to the Dark Knight. 79, 70... Yeah. 74? Uh, bringing it up here, uh, he first appeared in the Tactics number 27, May 1939. So he would be 74? Uh, I think so, actually. I think you've got the math right on that one. 
Uh, yeah, 74. So next year we'll be having, it'll be the year of Batman when we have a big 75 celebration for him. Exactly. Well, or if so, a certain blog and Tumblr gets a hold of it, it'll be the year of fucking Catwoman. Mm. Oh, no. Out. Let's do a fucking thing about uh, Katie Dick. <laughs> Deadpool, Wolverine and Cap. Mm-hmm. And I thought this might interest Boss. Uh, yeah. Funk and Boss. Yeah. Funk because he loves the Deadpool. Yeah. Loves him. Indeed. And f- boss, because he likes to see characters that wouldn't necessarily team up, team up. Exactly. Um, team up by necessity. Ryan Potion and Gary Dugan started their run of Deadpool last fall with Wade Wilson being given the unseemly task of bringing rampaging undead presence back to the death. Yes, I remember this. Since then, he spent, he spent time with Demon in a Bottle era Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Is now sharing consciousness with his late, sh- with his late shield ally, Agent Preston. During Sunday's X-Men panel at C2E2 in Chicago, mm-hmm. Chicago, Illinois, <laughs> Marvel announced that another multi-part arc in Dead- is in Deadpool's nearest future. The good, uh-huh. the bad, yep. and the ugly. Okay. Start in August with Deadpool 13. So when we get you a nice little uh, poll list, you'll be able to start this before then, dude. Yeah. Potion and Dugan will be joined by joined by a new team, uh, uh, new art team, sorry, of Declan Shavey and Jordi Bellar, while Deadpool himself will be joined by fellow Weapon Plus alumni, uh-huh. Wolverine, oh god, and Captain America, <laughs> on a mission tied to their shared past. Potion and Dugan, who can be heard playing Dungeons and Dragons on the Nerd Poker podcast, right, talk to us in detail about the good and the bad and the ugly, and um, now there's an interview here. I'm gonna try and pick out some uh, best parts of it, but. To be fair, I didn't read that until interview. I thought it was an announcement. So, um, so I would get back to you next week and with more details about that. In Dubai, now finally, battle uh, in the current news. I have a bit of movie news, which also crosses over with comics because that's what I do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, battle, battle of the atom. That's yep. why I kept saying battle. <laughs> Future X Men crossover into the past. Last November, all new X Men, which I would highly recommend anyone read. It's a very good read. Yeah. Brought the X Men of the past into the present. Now this was basically they brought the original X Men team, yep. mm-hmm. just as Hank McCoy was about to walk out originally, uh-huh. into the uh, in Hank McCoy as Beast walks in and goes, "You need to come with me. I need you to stop Scott Summers from killing the world." Okay. And they brought him over, and it's quite frankly a remarkable story. Okay. Very entertaining, and it's lots and lots of fun. Okay. So. This for um, proving that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Bit of physics there for you. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know my physics, man. Unless that was biology or chemistry and I'm fucked. No, that was physics. Get in there! <laughs> proving that every... Uh, this for a new X-book. Another X-book! Oh, for fuck's sake. You're already watching X-Men. I can't afford them. <laughs> I read every X-book apart from the solo titles. Yeah. <laughs> Every team, I have literally every X Men team or book on my poll list, and I didn't even choose it. <laughs> I didn't want to read them, kind of X Men, and then they made it irresistible not to. Damn you, Bendis. Uh, anyway, uh, crossover to the natural, the natural next step and bring the X Men of the future into the present. Oh, God. In an effort to send the X Men of the past back to their timeline by any means necessary. That's a nation okay. domination, isn't it? Yeah. Due to a cu- currently unrevealed yet clearly, a clearly fateful screw up. First announced during Marvel's X Men panel. Jesus, they announced a lot, didn't they? Sunday at C2E2 in Chicago, Illinois. Good. Battle of the Battle? Battle of the Atom. Battle of the Atom. Is a 10 part crossover running through the X books. Mm-hmm. I read them all there. Indeed. <laughs> right, uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Damn you, Bendis. Jason Aaron and you, Aaron. <laughs> and Brian Wood, you too, Wood. In September and October, I've got a lot of time to say about that. Yeah. Who knows, I might have a fucking job by then, I'm going to afford these buses. <laughs> <laughs> the story starts with X-Men Battle of the Atom 1 by Benders and Frank Cho. That's good, because Cho was one of my favourite um, artists. Yeah. And then runs through issues 12 and 13 of Uncanny. Yeah. 16 and 17 of All, All New. Yeah. 36 and 37 of Wolverine and the X-Men. Yeah. And five and six of the soon to deb- debut new volume of Wood Written X Men and Fire and Storm and then Battle of the Atom 2. Basically, this is going to be a lot like um, Second Coming, which I'll let you boss. Yes. Yeah. Where you know, start with two bookends 
And then, yeah, and have all of the crossovers. Yeah. So it'll be easy to follow anyway, even if you didn't read them all. It'll be basically a story containing themselves. At the same time, you probably have a couple of spin offs. Yes. Right, uh, X Men is a lot about legacy. Oh, shit, they're going to start with X Men legacy as well. <laughs> and where are we going and what we are getting? So, this is a perfect story to examine all that. Ben just told you Yeah. And it is a weird way to, weird way, the flip side of all new X Men. Instead of the past coming to the present, it's the future coming to the present. And now certain characters are going to be faced with their past, present, and future all, all at once. And you know who I'm thinking? Yeah. Hank! Iceman! I'm going to say Warren as well, Ark, uh, Angel, because he, he, he's having the most trouble right now with his past, because he's the past man's looking at who he currently is. As a, who, to anyone who's read... Um, have you read it yet? The Dark Angel? Yes. You read that from the... Uh, you read all of that? Yeah. You enjoyed it? Yeah. A fucking excellent story, isn't all it? All right. And you, obviously you've seen what happens at the end with Angel. It's not the man we knew as Warren anymore. It's literally yeah. Angel. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he progresses. Um... Iceman is having a really freaky time okay. <laughs> with uh, the old guy because he's going with well, I really like Dorky. And mm-hmm. he's going, how do I be kind of you yet? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's quite fun. And Kitty's, Kitty's actually currently playing babysitter to these X Men. Yeah. Uh, so it's be quite interesting. And Hank with Koi Cause, it was all Hank's idea, so he has to know whether he was in the right in the first place. So I'm guessing he's going to be fucked. Probably. <laughs> Uh, those future X-Men were designed by legendary artist Arthur Adams and based on sketches released by Marvel, including a Wolverine offspring, wait a minute, what, with potentially blue skin and red hair. Mystique. Holy shit! Wolverine Batman. Will you not learn, Logan? He's got a pass of Mystique uh, back in, uh, in Mexico one day. He found her and oh, um, oh. saved her life from being um, shot by... <laughs> Touched by an angel. Not quite. He was shot, <coughs> basically they shot her mm. and shot him by firing squad. Mm. Wolverine gets up and wonders how she did it. Apparently she just missed. She turned into a little girl. They save each other, they go and have this illustrious fair in, I think it's uh, yeah. a southern state in the 50s or something stupid, or 20s. Do you You know, you know one thing about Mystique though, right? About role playing the bedroom's fun. Oh, well, she, well, if you've read A House of M, and I know you have, yes. what happens? She, who was there? It's Mary Jane Watson. Mm. Because he was having one of his redhead fetishes. Yeah. So she turned into Mary Jane Watson, the most famous redhead in the Marvel Universe in the House yeah. of M. She's a famous actress. And he then tried to kill her. <coughs> a, his best one, right? Mm-hmm. A female Zorn, who was at one point thought to be the clone of Magneto, I remember that. Yeah. Here's the one. Yeah. An Ice Hulk. Oh. Yeah. And or Thing. So it's either, the, either Iceman bangs... She Hulk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, something happens with a daughter of fucking Ben Grimm. Yeah. <laughs> and Deadpool in some shape or form. Okay. Someone resembling Professor X. Mm-hmm. Or Beast. And an adult version of Molly Hayes from Runaways. Molly Hayes is a great character. Uh, she runs around with this like anime head like this thing. Yeah. Like, hat. Right. You know like those hats you see these days they've got little bunny ears and eyes. I know what you mean. Yeah. She's got one of them on but she had it well before like, I saw anyone yeah. else. So it was quite funny to see like, all these kids running around and going, wow, look at all these cosplays. Yeah. Some X-Men of today are going to be surprised by who they hooked up with and had babies with. Wow. So, that's going to be interesting for Wolverine who is trying to stay away from Mystique. Yeah. <laughs> Some people who aren't even romantically linked right now end up having children. Oh, dear God. Yeah. It's going to be hard to yeah, walk away from. <laughs> Aaron said to News Around that the future X Men will be led by the older Kitty Pryor from the classic Days of Future Past storyline. Boom! Yes. Which, of course, um, serves as major inspiration for Brian Singer's 2014 film of the same name. Batman of the Atom is also intended as a celebration of the X Men 50th anniversary, as Stanley and Jack Kirby's X Men 1 debuted in September 1963. The story also have lots of touchstones that X-Fans recognise, little moments like references, locations, characters in here that in here that herken back to a lot of different areas of X-Men history, said Aaron, who Ben is credits for originally conceiving of the story. So it's you're gonna fuck up. Although he does re- he does write one of my favourite X-Men books at the minute, Wolverine and the X-Men, because it's just it focuses more on the children of the, uh, uh, the X-Men school. Yeah. Which is something I love to see. I, I mean I, don't get me wrong, I love seeing the X-Men that we all know. Yeah. But sometimes seeing the young mutants is just, just as fun. Yeah. Because you don't get to see that every day. 
You don't see that in every book. You see that in one or two books. Yeah. Um, this is a celebration of, X of 50 years worth of X-Men stories. We just try to cram in as much as we can. Mm. To that end, the story will include pretty much all the main X-Men characters, according to Aaron, writer of Wolverine and X-Men, the longest running of the four books participating in the crossover. Mm -hmm. This will be the first time we've seen Wolverine's side and Cyclops' side thrown together in one big story in such a huge way since Schism. And I believe that's where I ended you on my books, right, Bob? Yeah. Uh, Funk? Yes. Schism. Have you read them yet? Uh, no, not yet. If you get to that point, just tell me and I'll bring the rest sure. over. And you stuck the belt under, haven't you? No. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Aaron said, "There's going to be a lot of huge, lot going on here. Three X Men writers from three X Men writers for starters. For me, I'm just thrilled to be a part of this. It's a big honor to the X Men universe on this anniversary. Now, we lo a lot of X Men fans did long think for a long uh, that there was going to be something like this coming along with it being the 50th anniversary. Yeah." Uh, Battle of the will be the, traditional, uh, will be the first traditional X crossover within the X-Men titles since 2010's second coming. Mm -hmm. right. Though it's some of a hallmark of the franchise dating back to 1986 Mutant Massacre and including significant stories such as Extinction Agenda, Execution, Execution of Song and Messiah Complex. I own two of them. Yes. Yeah. I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> uh, Marvel Senior Editor Nick Lowe says that the crossover format is implementing of what makes uh, the X-Men popular. I do sort of point out what's going on about this because it is quite a large article because, like I said, there's a lot happening right now mm. because it's the, the 50th anniversary. It's a big crossover. Yeah. Uh, the X-Men are uh, one of the biggest, most complicated soap operatic landscapes, low toed news around me. It makes Game of Thrones family trees look simple. I'll tell you a lot there, Funk. <laughs> At least it's not going to be any incest. Well, we don't know that. We don't know what happened in the future. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. All in the universe, only this is 616. Oh, yeah, then they get assassinated anyway. Mm, well, she, no, it's real, they didn't actually kill her. Oh, right. It's all fucked up magic and shit. Isn't Quicksilver uh, still okay. killed, though? Or no, he's revealed scared? at the end of Ultimatum to be alive. All right. I was assassinated once. Okay. <laughs> there are at least a hundred important characters and their lives all interconnect in such draconian ways that's something that I've always loved about it. So something that in the wang is as much as one of these crossovers plays up in a perfect way. Beyond the artistic contributions of Cho and Adams who drew the Batman uh, on the Atom number one cover, Stuart Eminent and Chris Blarcho are also... I do apologise if I'm brutally raping all these names. <laughs> I won't worry about it. Are on their, respect re res are on their respective re regular books for the crossover. Old, new, and uncanny. With uh, Giuseppe Camucci, illustrating Wolverine and X-Men, and John Lopez on X-Men. The latest chapter will be drawn by as-yet-revealed re artist, with Lowe saying, it's too big of news not to hold on to for fun of later. Oh, please. Please tell me Gaiman's got something to do with that. Ooh, Stan. Maybe Stan will come back. <laughs> Actually, Stan was a writer. So yeah. Shane Jack died. Because Jack could have been yeah. doing the last one. That would be amazing. Uh, ben has said that the outcome of Battle Bat of the Atom will involve a significant status quo shift. Of course it does. Yeah, of course. For, for his books, all new X-Men and Uncanny uh, in particular. And about those are, those involved, are, and that those involved, sorry, yeah. are looking to play up what they like about the crossover like this and avoid what they don't. In the past, when they would do crossovers like this, there's always that one book where you go, oh, I wasn't buying, oh, I wasn't buying that, Bendis related, Bendis related. But those books are really wonderful. It's kind of an honour to cross over with them. And to be fair, I've done that in the past. Yeah. Uh, with Second Coming, I, sorry, no, Messiah Complex. I wasn't reading um, uh, X Factor. Huh? I turned around and went, I really should be reading X Factor. Yeah. <laughs> it's an investigative noir, which sadly is ending. Ooh, my apologies. It's okay. Every chapter is a major chapter. Well, that's how he ends it. So it's going to be interesting there. Uh, I'll quickly go into onto some movie news before we move on to one of the, two of the fun, fun <laughs> story the boss has found. Thank you, boss. You're welcome. Say so thank you, boss. Thank, thank you. you, boss. Okay, movie news. Movie news. News about the movies. Michael Fassbender and Natalie Portman are to star in Macbeth. Now, I bring this up not because I'm a huge Shakespearean guy or that Funk is a huge Shakespeare guy. I, I am a fan of both, but this is really more for Boss. Okay. It was a huge Shakespeare fan. Um, Michael Fassbender is set to play uh, Macbeth 
And Natalie Portman is set to play Lady Macbeth. Of the, of the infamous, is this a dagger I foresee before me? Yeah, is this a dagger I see before me for the back of a cherry pasuka? <laughs> Fassbender and Portman are all, uh, already appearing in Terence Malick's upcoming and yes, yet to be tight, un, uh, yet as yet untitled Musu drama, and they almost starred in together and Jane got a gun before Fassbender left the trouble production. Hmm. Uh, the new adaptation will be described by Todd Lucio and will keep the original setting and dialogue of Shakespeare's source material. No Verona Beach here. Yeah. Uh, directed by Snowtown's just Justin Kersnell, production is set to begin within the year uh, of the film later this year, with no release date to confirm as yet. No doubt this sort of film will probably go to um, a indie festival like South by Southwest yeah. or Cannes. That uh, makes sense. Or, um, fuck, what's the um, one? Shit, I don't know which one you mean. Oh, huh? fucking. Sundown! Ah, fuck I. Is Sundown? Something like that. Sundance, Sun, Sundance isn't it? Sundance, that's the one. Sundance, Sundance Festival. In Utah. Yeah, Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, Sundance. Or Toronto. Something like that. That's the one you'd aim this sort of crowd at. Just go, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the official so, website. I, I, I'm paying attention, but, like, I, I'm just away for just sitting so my, my ear didn't quite catch all that. I literally just thought I heard Geek go, yeah, anus them at that. It's like <laughs> okay. the next one is in January on January sixteenth to January twenty sixth, two thousand fourteen, Park City, Utah. Well, they don't mean that. They always make Southwest of Cairns, you know. Yeah. Cairns, the little Cairns. Cairns. No, that's Cairns. Not Cairns. Um, for Star Wars fans, JJ Abrams believes that John Williams will score Star Wars Episode Seven. Williams has already been quoted as saying he hopes to be invited back to the franchise. And Abraham seems to really think the dream will likely become for a reality. And for Star Wars, it's very early days, but I believe that going forward, John Williams will be doing that film. No. Because he was there long before I was. Now, of course, for people like me who didn't know who he was, can you explain who he is? He's the composer that came up with... You carry on. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> he is that man. I'm a fucking master. Um, so that's good news for Star Wars fans. We're going to get the old one back. Because even if you watch, I mean, yeah. I know we watched the prequels and we some of us didn't mind them, some of us hated them, some of us didn't watch them all. But even when you heard that yeah. in the prequels, it wasn't John Williams. Mm. He didn't score any of the prequels, so that's probably why I fell asleep halfway through fucking Attack of the Clones. Well, I fell asleep because it was a boring piece of crap. There's always that. There's always that. Uh, Brian Singer, once again, I do not have to go watch the new fucking X-Men film in cinemas. Because right. you're going to show me it on bloody twit pick. <sighs> Brian Singer is keeping the stream of teaser material flowing nicely from the set of X-Men Days Future Past. With the latest image giving a glimpse of the returning Wolverine. Wolverines! Wrong film. I don't care. It's Red Dawn. Wolverines! Oh, back but with a leather and hair combo. Wolvie cuts a pretty and unmistakable figure. Not that the chap on his left looks to impress mind. Mm. The, there's a guy who looks as if he's like, really? That's what you do? Yeah. I've already cropped up in the X-Men first class for one of the most hilarious cameo appearances in comic book history. Which we will show. All right. Which at some point you will show uh, me seen to uh, boss because we will be doing another episode of what the fuck are we watching? Yeah. The problem is obviously is trying to get it to a format that works because mm-hmm. the show we were doing at the, t- uh, the episode that we recorded wasn't we a lot of work weevils. Yeah, we'll we'll sort it out. So it's a uh, work in progress. It's a weapon. Yeah, we'll work it. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Jackman should have a little more to get his teeth in this time. A section of the film uh, will take place in the future with Wolverine and the rest of his teammates locked up in a series of nightmarish mutant mu- concentration camps. Some of us tells us he won't like that. Yeah. Uh, director Singer and co and directed by Singer and co starring James McAvoy and Fassben- Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Patrick Stewart, Sir Ian McKellen, and many, many, many more people. Harry Berry and fucking Ro- uh, Anna Paquin and. So many others. Yeah. Um, X-Men Days of Future Past will open in the UK on the 18th of July 2014. Nice. Just in time for Funk's 18th. <laughs> yes, people, I'll be 18 in a couple of years. One year. I'll be legally allowed to buy a drink. One year. Yeah, you're going to be 17 this year. 
Yes. Max really isn't your strong suit, is it? No one have had a very tiring day. No, it is not. Um, Doctor Who's Max Smith. Yep. First word on Ryan Gosling's director debut. Yep. He filmed my audition on his iPhone. Doctor Who star Matt Smith's big screen career got an almighty boost when he was uh, cast in Ryan Gosling's director debut, How to Catch a Monster. Smith joins Christina Hendricks, boom baby, in the fantasy noir, with Mad Men actress starring as a single mum drawn into an underwater town, yeah, an underwater town, in searching of a missing child. Speaking of total film magazine for our future 100 Lego issue... Which covers the most exciting happenings in the movies and is out on 10th of May 2013. I'll give you a nice cheap plug. <laughs> cheap plug. Smith has explained how he came to be cast by Gotham. I was in New York, I was about to fly back, and then I got a phone call saying Ryan wanted to meet me and come over. So I read his film and I thought it was brilliant. And then I auditioned and we spent about four hours together doing some stuff and he filmed it on his iPhone. And that was it. And now I'm going off to shoot in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited, I think he's really clever, and I think it's going to be an exciting project. When he was asked if Gosling had asked him to do anything, uh, any specific preparation for the role, Smith responds, "Yeah, I'm doing lots of research and different." <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. It was uh, I could feel my throat climbing up there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm doing lots of research around different people and stuff. But again, I won't go into too much. I'm sure this is all fine to talk about. When I know I can, I will. But I'm reading a couple of books, I'm watching a couple of documentaries by a particularly famous documentary maker everyone knows and has seen one of his documentaries, and obviously just trying to get the acting, the acting right. But at the moment, I'm shooting who? Sort of juggling both balls, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> Smith went on to add that he's doing an American accent for the role, and said that How to Catch a, a, a Monster has a wonderful Lynchian quality to it. He's who, who Lynchian was famous for... Um, <laughs> Twin Peaks. Excuse me. Thank you very much for jogging my memory there. For Twin Peaks. Yes. Um, God, I can help. How to Catch a Monster is expected to open in 2014. We'll be keeping the... Now, Total Film says they're keeping a close eye, close eye on this one. For much uh, more for Smith, the nightmare of a movie, people, trends, and game changes, you need to watch for Pick Up Their 100, Future 100 issue on May 10th, 2013. Or get the digital issue. Comic book news. Comic book news. For the movie world. The Fantastic Four reboot has got a bit of a rumour monument momentum with yes. the news that Alison Williams is on the shortlist for Sue Stormroom. She's a very pretty young lady and is currently on HBO's Girls. I recommend checking it out. Well, and, checking out Girls? That's a good plan, Geek. Well, that's what we're doing on Free Comic Day. What up? The news was broken very casually in the midst of a deadline story pointing that the actress is back. Here's a one for you again, uh, Boss. Yes, completely forgot about this uh, news. As bagged, uh, the actress has bagged the lead role in Rosaline, Fox's revisionist take on Romeo and Juliet, from the perspective of the first object of, flirt, of flighty Romeo's affection. Yeah, I, I have to admit, uh, I'm sorry, being a, like, as he says, I'm a, I like Shakespeare. I know he's a big guy. I, I utterly hate Romeo and Juliet. Right. I figure it's more. Oh, yeah. It's one of the most overrated plays he has, and Romeo is a terrible, terrible character. Which would be interesting to see how Rosaline is, considering it's from her, her point of view about how... Oh, so he's just going to fuck off and leave me, is he? Okay, we'll see about that. <laughs> Do you really want to hurt uh, More exciting, me? however, is the tidbit that Williams is on the Fantastic Four's shortlist, which is obviously in its early stages. Uh, she's currently best known for playing Marnie... Uh, yeah, Marnie. In HBO's Girls... Williams has so far worked on some of your TV. Seems Fox aren't shy of hunting out lesser known and up and comers for this reboot. Hmm. Given director Josh Trang's take on superheroes in Chronicle, we expect a darker, harder edged take on the comic book quartet than we saw in the previous family friendly movies. Now, I don't like that. Yeah. The Fantastic Four is supposed to be family fucking friendly. Well, that's the point. They're called the Fantastic Four. It's they not, are it's, a it's family. not going to be fucking Sid City, is it? Yeah. They are a family. Yeah. Um, one so the penultimate piece of news I got if I can try and find you one that is yeah. uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver confirmed for the Avengers 2 script like we said last week this is the two we thought that Joss Whedon was told about during the red carpet Iron Man 3 where he said that he had a twin a couple of twins a brother, oh, sorry a brother and sister pairing in the Avengers 2 as a new cast yeah uh, this, this, that's swift um, the question was put to Kevin Feige by Entertainment Weekly in a recent interview and while the Marvel head honcho attempted to play it with a straight bat his comments were interesting to say the least I'm not confirming or denying the draft could change six 
this could change six months from now. Does that mean the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch have been written into the final first draft? When t talk taken in tandem with Whedon's earliest comments, it certainly does appear that way. Directed by Whedon and co-starring Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> uh, Jason Renner, I think it is. I may be wrong there. Corey Smolders. Oh yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. I don't, I don't wish to overplay my action, but... <sighs> Tom Hiddleston. And many more. The Avengers 2 will open in the UK on the 1st of May, 2015. That is correct. We are less than two years away from the Avengers 2. And Kobe Smolders will be in IMAX. Well, she was in, I in the Avengers when I went to watch it, so yeah. Okay. And finally, let me just see if I can bring oh, this up. Yeah. I have one last piece. Um, I can just, just do a quick search here. That's right. I was saying the opportunity to just tidy myself up a bit. <laughs> yep, uh, Fantastic Four, more news for the character of the Human Torch. Okay. Johnny Storm, you know, fun, cracking, wise, talking, you know, playboy. Jeremy Irons. No, that playboy who's the brother of Susan Storm. Yep. Uh, there are a few ways to poke the proverbial bear with greater effectiveness than are you that increasing diversity of casting the superhero movies is a good thing, and not to mention necessary to reflect the growing fan base of superheroes and comic book movies, which continues to break down the barriers of race and gender. Case in point, just ask Tumblr how many women love Tony Stark and Loki. Yeah. It's one thing to be traditional African-American characters such as the Falcon and Captain America, like Anthony Mackie, or to consider an up-and-coming black actor to portray the African prince Black Panther. But go, but go and cast Oscar winner Jamie Foxx to play Electro in Spider-Man 2 and well you can just sit back and watch the fight in the game. Which is interesting when now I am moving away because this is from a thing called Screen Rant and I don't really want that. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Interesting when you cast Chronicle actor Josh Trank yes. to play John Johnny Storm. Now I mentioned that the reason I brought up that original blurb is because it pretty much sets up for what I'm about to say. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be that guy. But, but you, you've got I've got to be that guy. Yeah. Susan Storm is going to be cast as a white girl. Yes. I think a white woman. Yeah. And you're going to cast an African-American male as her brother. Uh, as my wife and kids star Damien Wayans used to say, eh, 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 no. To quote a great man in the wrestling business, nope. nope. Or to just flat out and say it, I don't think so. Now, here is the thing. Now, this is, this is, this is what happens when you give Reverend Al Sharpton casting options. <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't have a black human torch for one simple reason. There's never been a black human torch. And his sister is white. Now you can try and put whatever spin on it, but at the end of the day, you know how you're gonna, you know how you don't make a billion dollar movie in a comic book one? Let's place it this way, right? The Avengers made a billion dollars Dark Knight Rises made a billion dollars. Yeah. Iron Man 3 came out last weekend and pretty much destroyed everything the UK charts had. And this Friday will destroy everything, including Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Mark Wahlberg's film, Pain and Game, which is currently number one in the box office. The Rock even said this in a tweet. Well, here co hashtag, here comes Iron Man 3. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you... Do you know how you're not going to do this? Yeah. You cast... The wrong people in the wrong roles, and you have idiots who will boycott it. Now, was I one of those guys who did it for four? No, because gods can be whatever they want. Hemdial, yes, he is the brother of Sif, I believe, but that doesn't make a difference when it can't, when you turn around and go, "Oh yeah, Hemdial's black." Yeah, and he's a god. He's you never made any allusion to it. You didn't do anything like this, yeah. but you want me to sit there and go, "Johnny Storm is the." No, because then you're going to have to say that the, 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 the half-brothers and sisters. Yeah. 
and they're not. They're the closest brother and sister relationship you ever get to. Which isn't incestuous. Yeah. It's the it's basic common sense, though. And that's the thing. It's not about... You piss off the fan base and you're not going to make any money. And ultimately, it's not even Next about... Next thing you're going to tell me that you're going to cast Julia McMahon as Doctor Doom again. But again, right, it's not about getting black people to play white characters or white uh, people to play black characters. It's nothing about that at all. What it's about is this idea of, you know, oh, we're going to cast this because they're black. Yeah. And it's like, well, look, I understand that you're trying to be diverse, but when it makes Diversity no, for diversity's yeah. sake does not make sense. Yeah. That in itself is racism. It's, you know, trying to cash in on people's colour, the colour of people's skins to make a buck. And I'm yeah. sorry, that's just wrong. It really is. So, you know, this idea of, you know, our way, you know, if we're gonna we're gonna have a play. We're gonna have like a black, uh, uh, a black torch. It's like, but his sister's white. Um, if, if they're, they're not half brothers, the no. half uh, they have the exact same parents. Yep. So who's gonna play? So in, in that world, who plays the parents? Obviously, we're not gonna see the parents in but, that world. But think about it. You know what you do? You make it a girl thing instead of instead of the thing. Mm-hmm. Welcome to my world. Is Reed Richards? I mean, you're gonna go to the Ultimate Universe, right? Where they're all young. Yeah. I get that; it makes sense. Yeah. Reed Richards is already a man. By the time Reed Richards gets to um, to the experiment that takes him to space, yeah, he's already graduated. He's only graduated with a master's and a doctorate at the age of thirteen. Yeah, I did that once. And then he gets the greatest hair that ages him, and he comes evil in the Ultimate Universe. But I don't think they'll go that far. Yeah. <laughs> So here's the thing. I don't want to be that guy, but you're making me that guy and don't make me that guy. But at the the end of the day, it's not about race. We're not saying... I want the story and the characters to be integral, but I want them to be chosen for the right bloody reasons. I mean, if it was... Right, I mean, here's the thing. I've... Here's a a proof for you. Yeah? When A.J. Fox was announced as Electra... I didn't bitch about that. Mm. I said, get in there. J.J. Fox is a great actor. Exactly. He's but, tr- and more importantly, do you know what? Yeah. Here's the thing: Jamie Foxx is an act- Oscar-winning actor mm-hmm. for Ray for Ray for his portrayal of Ray Charles. Yeah. He then did an album called Untouchable, mm-hmm. and sound and did songs that I swear to God would have been Ray Charles. Yeah. And mo- then he moved on, and he did some lesser good films. You know, didn't do great. You know, Collateral was one of them. But then he did. Oh, then he did freaking quiet one and annoyed me but then he came out and did Django yeah Django he did Django and sh- Django. he did Django what happened he yep. knocked it out the park absolutely now he's got to worry now he's going to do all this now we've got to worry about all the rest of the world we've got to worry about Electro here's the thing I've seen pictures of Electro when he's Electro oh my looks God. badass he does they've got the ultimate route with it it makes they look badass and him as, is it, him as Max looks cool as well yeah. I ain't no bitch about that. Wait, four. There was American groups that were saying, you know, you can't have Heimdall as a god, as a god of, you know, Viking descent, and that, and I'm from, I have Norwegian descent in me, and I'm gonna, I take an offense that a black man is playing my god. Bitch, if you're a Christian, yep. you're black, your god is black. Yeah. And I'm a Catholic saying that. I mean, it's also, again, the, the basic point is, it's not the fact that he's black, it's the fact that. He's got it a, doesn't work. It doesn't work for that particular character. Cast him as something else. Just don't ultimately, cast him. ultimately, could you have a black James Bond? Yes. Yeah, because it was broke down with a cold yeah. name in Skyfall. Could you theoretically one day have a black Superman? Mm-hmm. Yes. It was, it, but there has to be a story. Can work. you have? And unless, and if if we're completely fucking wrong, like if we've completely misunderstood biology, feel free to say because we are not geniuses by yeah, any stretch of the fucking imagination. Maybe I'm, but. You know, Sorry, when you have genius. a spike, and we're not talking about mixed race here, right? No. Nope. We're talking about black and white. Yep. You know, as a brother, as blood brother and sister. Yep. Well, dude, I mean, you're secretly black. I mean, let's just think about what he said before the show started. We should probably mention that word in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my news. I've had a little rant, I've yeah. got it off my chest. Now, show me boobs. The FHM 100 Sexiest Women of 2013 results have been announced. And I am going to go through them all. 
because I'm awesome. So, at number, no! no, number 100, Sofia Margarita Vergara Vergara. Sofia uh, she is from uh, Colombia. She is a model and an actress. Yeah. Uh, now, this is the uh, second time she's been number 100. She's previously been 83rd, uh, 83rd 24th, 63rd, and 74th. So, once again, the 100th spot goes to her. Last time she was in this spot, it was 2006. She played Alicia Orvidio in the Colombian version of Desperate Housewives mm-hmm. called Amas de Casas Desperadas. Yep. Naturally has brown hair, but is, uh, she is asked to dye to retain her Latina look. Mm-hmm. Once dated Enrique Iglesias, the lucky fucker, <laughs> um, and she relocated her family to Miami in 1998 after her brother was kidnapped and murdered. Oh, nice to finish on a no, no. The quote, uh, she's quite you, can a, see, you can see her in Modern Family, uh-huh. uh, in Four Brothers, yeah. and uh, one of my favourite uh, TV shows, Entourage. Uh, she was quoted as saying, uh, if you're asking if my breasts are natural, yes, this is how I've looked since I was 13 years old. Damn! Yeah. So, 13 is a very lucky number. <laughs> okay. Um, and let's be ridiculous. Go up, go up, go up. Ah, oh, is it just doing the 10? I said the 10 now. I've got, to, I've got to see if I... It would be nice if I uh, just do the full... I think you have to go down the bottom and go one by one, dude. Yeah. Uh, up next is... Yeah. Uh, Natalie Emmanuel. Oh, I know her. Uh, Natalie Joanne Emmanuel. She is an actress. Um, she in Hollyoaks. Yeah, absolutely. And just appeared in Game of Thrones um, in season three. Absolutely. So she, she, I believe she plays the... Um, one of the Unsullied... Yeah. Sl- uh, the slaves that come with the Unsullied. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, up next on our list, yeah, because I totally didn't like pause the video and open up all the links. That's not why at all. I said I'm back. No, not at all. Up next is uh, Chloe Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> she's a model and a nurse. Uh, she's wow. taken uh, the next spot there. Uh, okay, I don't actually know uh, at all, but yeah, uh, nice she's name, from, nice. Obligation. She's from Liverpool. Fucking voice though. <laughs> Um, not to put anyone man. Okay. Uh, next uh, is Olivia Godfrey. Uh, I, I know her. For, uh, board of litigation presenter broadcaster at Sky Sports. Of course I know her then. <laughs> She's on Sky Sports. Absolutely. Uh, next in line is Susanna Reid. Really? Yeah, from Crown England. Wow. Yeah. BBC Breakfast is fucking... Wow, I didn't think that would come over. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I bet she's out on me. I, I bet she is. Yeah, I bet she's fucking happy. I'm just getting the numbers. Was, yes, because I've kind of lost which number one. So that one was. 96. So up next is. Restart, refresh. <sighs> That's. Like that. <laughs> that uh, so up next, uh, so. Number 95 is Layla Anna Lee. I couldn't tell you anything about her because the page won't load yeah. up. So number 94, Imogen Poots. Uh, born from Hammersmith, London, England. Actress and a model. What's she been in? Um, Need for Speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Bell, but... Number 93. Linda Barker. Really? Yeah. A lot of UK peeps so far. No, a lot of old peeps. Number 92. Rachel Shenton. Stoke on Trent, England. Actress. Ah, she's from... Um, Hollyoaks. Hollyoaks, she's Mindy. Alright, number 91, I believe. Kristen Stewart. <laughs> from Los Angeles, California. Uh, I choked. <laughs> Taken, uh, did I say number 91? Yeah. Is it 91? Okay, I've got, I'm, I'm going to say this like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm going to put it like this, right? Yeah. It may have surprised me. Yeah. But I hit that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, she now previous her previous records. Twenty twelve, she was uh, number fifty two. <laughs> two thousand eleven, she was number thirteen. <laughs> In two thousand ten, she was sixth. And now she is number ninety one. Right, number ninety, Rachel Riley. The oh, cow- she's got the legs on countdown. Yep. Yeah. Now, previously, 2012, she was number eighty four, so <laughs> she dropped down six places. And two thousand nine, she was number ninety five. Okay. So it's, okay. Yeah. So. Getting there. Number 89, Lucy Collette. Mama from Warwick, Sita. England. Another model. Described as a real life Jessica Rabbit. Now, she often gets compared to Christina, Hen- uh, Christina Hendricks or well, Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, she's ginger with big tits. Mm. Uh, I believe what? Number 88 now? I don't check the page that you're front. Uh, I believe Lucy Collette was number 88. 89. So now we're, now we're up to number 88. 
and that is uh, Franziska Klein. Uh, sorry, Franziska Klein. She's a model, I'm guessing from Germany. I would assume in so. <laughs> in 2012, she was number 100. All right. So okay. nice, uh, 12 spots she's okay. jumped up. Yeah. Number 87. Do, 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 if I could close the right one. Eva Mendes, Mama Sita! Uh, now she's got a long history in the sexiest women. In 2011, she, wa- by the way, she wasn't. She wasn't in number 12. 2011, she was 33rd. Uh, 2010, she was 11th. Tw- uh, 2009, she was 29th. 2008, 35th. 2007, 11th. 2006, 25th. Uh, 2005, she was 60th. And number 2004, she was number 88. You might remember her from such films as Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. If you had to sit through that, mm-hmm. she did look really hot. Mm-hmm. Hitch, Too Fast, Too Furious. And recently, most recently, she's been in The Place Over the Pines. Or okay. Beyond the Pines, sorry. Number 86, Gemma Myrna. And I... Sh- uh, let me see if I refresh that. Oh, she's uh, Carmel McQueen. Yeah. So there we go. From Holy Oaks. Ah, she's Carmel McQueen. Number 85, Britney wow, Spears. Britney Spears is still rocking the, the top chart. Yeah. Well, Number- I think the top chart is... Actually, isn't this roughly where her singles get these days? Yeah. Like 85th on the charts? This, this, this is obviously, this is the lowest rank she's had in her history of uh, being in uh, the top 100. But... Even when she was an unfit mother? Um, <laughs> I mean, she was in 1990, 2000, 2001, 2002, 3, 4, 5... Uh, she wasn't in number 6. She was in 2006. 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so apart from 2006... Since she did in 1999, the only one she's missed is 2006. Wow. Impressive. So number 84 is uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Uh, Actress. Live Free or Die Hard. Wrong. Yeah, she was in Live Free or Die Hard. Death Proof, The Ring 2, The Thing, Fire Destination 3, The Shine. Uh, she's also a big horror fan. She's uh, in Scott Pilgrim and yeah. she's um, the one you're trying to get with. Uh, she, flowers. She's called us to Ramona sing. Flowers. That's she's, Ramona Flowers. She's called us to sing. What do I look for in a man? Someone who doesn't take themselves seriously. That's my biggest thing. <laughs> boom, baby, boom. <laughs> Number eighty-three, Lacey Bangard. You dirty model. Look at you eating a banana. Bangard and she's God. Got, eating a banana. Bangard. You know. Firstly, she's called Bangard. Secondly, she's pictured eating a banana. Bit, call me maybe. Eighty-two, Carly Rae Jepsen. How old is she? Uh, she's born 1985. Oh, thank God, she is. 24. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, 24, two years younger than I am. She can't be. She, she says. No, no, she's not 24. I'm 24. Oh, sorry, uh, 20. <laughs> sorry, uh, she's two years older than me, sorry. 28. 28, 27. Uh, 28. Alright, cool. Uh, Definitely she's. Definitely <laughs> she says, I really like guys that have confidence, but not that cocky, over the top confidence. Oh, shit. Bye. Uh, <laughs> Bye. Number 81, <laughs> Hannah Toynton. Oh, here she's from um, In Between Us and Hollyoaks. She played yeah. Warren Fox's baby sister in Hollyoaks, and in In Between Us, she was the yeah. girlfriend of yeah. Oh, Simon. Yeah, and uh, she's 26. Twice, uh, December 1987. Well, that makes me feel good about myself. And number 80, Ashley Roberts. Oh, yeah, she's a pussycat girl. Yeah. Uh, pussycat doll, sorry. Yeah. Uh, also, rumoured to be getting one off um, Declan Darling. Number 79, <laughs> Oriani <laughs> Celestia from Lord oh, of the Rings. Oh, yes, she, uh, sorry, no, she's not from Lord of the Rings, she's no, the US. Uh, USC girl. Yeah, she's she from carries Lord of the, the card. Yeah. Oh, beautiful one. Absolutely. Uh, oh. I don't like people who lie, cheat, or steal, or betray. I'm a big, uh, big on trust and loyalty, she says. Viva La Rosa? <laughs> <laughs> no, Viva La Rosa. Number 78, <laughs> Hayley Williams. Yeah, baby! Uh, Hayley has made it to the top. In, in 2012, she appeared at the number 62nd spot. So she was in last year, it's about number 62. We just killed Funk. Yeah. Um, at number From Paramore, s- she is. Number 77, oh, Fern right, Cotton. Fern Cotton. Yes, uh, 2012, she was number 42. Just became a MILF. 2008, she was 71. 2007, she was 69. Selfie. <laughs> 2006, she was, 2006, she came number 19th. Uh, 2005, she was 61st. So this is the uh, the lowest rank she's had in the we have that number, yeah. I can't believe that number. Yeah. What are we on? Uh, number 77. 77, alright, and we're getting there. We're getting close. Ah. Uh, she says, My idea night out is a nice old man's country pub locking around my mates putting beer mats at our elbows. I'd say that would be me as well, Fern, but you've got the husband. 76, Liam Michelle. Wow. Uh, she was in 2011 uh, top 100 at the number 47 spot. Yeah, she's one of the main chicks from Glee, right? Yes. 
And she gets hooked up with the main dude from Glee. Yeah. Who's just going to rehab for drugs. Number 75. He's 20 Candy Swinpool. Who? Model. From South Africa. I thought you said muggle. <laughs> In 2011, she came number 62nd. Well, you know, it's not even going to be first. In 2010, <laughs> she came 61st. Diplomatic immunity. So again, the lowest uh, <laughs> the lowest she's had. Uh, number 74, Kristen Crick. Oh, look, it's uh, Lana Lang from Smallville. Yeah. And she also made a terrible, 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 terrible Chun Li in, in the yeah. uh, Street Fighter yeah, movie. I had a terrible series in Smallville. This. I don't know. I like Smallville, bitch. Oh, Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. Hey, guys. Guys. Now, this is her lost right. Get movie. out. Number 73. <laughs> Louise Thompson. Oh, no, hey. uh, oh, she's from Maven Chelsea. I can't stand her. Yeah. Instantly don't like her. Uh, number 72. <laughs> Emma Watson. 72. What the... And we killed this, Funk again. This is, but this is not the lowest rank she's ever had. We killed Funk. This is not the lowest rank she ever had. In 2009, she actually came number 98. <laughs> and now I've, logged, I've, I've, I've accidentally activated Twitter. Do you, know, do you know what's funny? What? Funk's lost all the blood to one area and now he's dead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. <laughs> uh, she's actually quoted as saying, let's be honest, I have enough money to never have to work again, but I would never want that. Go sit with me in the room and you'll never want to leave. <laughs> God, I love that woman. Please, sir. 71, Amanda Bryan. Um, TV presenter. The magicians and yeah. a dog's breath. Uh, You're going to miss? Look at both without me. No! <laughs> now, number 70, Caroline Flack. Oh, yeah, she dated One Direction at one point. Yeah. Uh, last time Where's she, Prince Harry? No, she debuted in the top 100 in 2012, coming number 48. So mm. a significant drop of 38. Uh, no, sorry, 38. Uh, 22. I'd, I'd have that. Okay, so number 69. <laughs> Rachel Balson. Oh, yeah. Oh, Summer from OC. Yeah. And in 2012, she was number 63rd. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's dropped down one. 2052, uh, 2010, 34th, 2008, 16th, 2034, um, 2006, 28th, and 2005, 99th. Well, she hasn't had much work recently. I mean, yeah. the last time I saw her, she was in um, How I Met Your Mother as a lesbian. Yeah. Number 68. Jesse G. Fuck you. Okay. She is singer. Price tag. You know. 67th. Jade Ewen, uh, who was a singer, uh, singer, actress, and model. She's in the Sugar, Sugar Babes, Babes, I believe, yeah. Indeed. Okay, number 66. Millie Claude. Oh, yeah, she's uh, Sky Sports News. Presenter. Okay. Well, she is. She's number 65. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, oh, she's back. Yep. Um, last, time, last time she appeared in the top 100 was in 2008 when she was number 19th. 2007, 43rd, 2006, 16th, 2005, 12th, 2004, 12th, 2003, 7th, 2002, 15th, 2001, 50th, 2013, 99, 31st. So this is her lowest rank in the top 100, but she is coming back from some absence. Man, you, want to talk about, you want to talk about titties? Some cracking power. Number 64, Gemma Atkinson. Wow, you're back. Yeah. Uh, wow. Last time she appeared in 2009 in the 81st position. <laughs> this is not her lowest rank. Obviously, 81st was. 2008, she was 18, 2007, 23rd. Uh, 2006, 32nd. I yeah, imagine the boob uh, job hot. helped. Yeah, no, well, yeah, but. Well, well she jumped to an 8. Yeah, well, to be fair, she um, to start the All list. people ask about is boobs. It's like the whole nation is obsessed with my boobs. I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 63rd. Juno Temple. Alright, that's cool. That's yep. cool. You're from uh, Killer Joe, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, you played. She played Selena Kyle's uh, be- friend in The Dark Knight Rises, Ooh. and it's currently about a star, I believe, in Lovelace, which is a story about a, po- yep. the, uh, a porno. She said the only things that were pain in the ass while filming were the constant camel tolls from those booty hugging shots. Yes. Number sixty second, Bernice Malot. Never heard of her. But I'm she's sure a, I she's a French actress model. Sky four. <laughs> yep. Um. Her favourite Bond actress is Famke Janssen. And number 61st, Jenna Louise Coleman. Currently the Doctor's side uh, companion, previously in Emmerdale, where she played a lesbian, mm-hmm. and had a brief debut slash cameo in uh, Captain America The First Avenger, where she played um, the date of Bucky. Yes, and uh, she actually debuted last year uh, at the 91st position, so huge leap. I mean, 30, po- 30 places. I think mean, she's cute. Yeah. Uh, number 60, I believe, one down. Ah, uh, right, it's Cece from Newcastle. 
Ah yes, I need to double check. So Hannah Simone, because I believe I could over Hannah Simone. Hannah Simone, number sixty. So this is number sixty. Yeah, I was right. Hannah Simone. Yeah. Uh, new girls, CC, um, who is made to be with Schmidt. I don't care what you say. I ship it. Okay, so yeah, I said I ship. You what about it? Number three, fifty-nine. Katrina Bowden, <laughs> New Jersey, New Jer- <laughs> from Wyckoff. <laughs> from Wyckoff, New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, um, from Thirty Rock. Oh my God! I can't resist a good piece of carrot cake, gummy dots, and gummy bears. Funk! <laughs> Leave that page on for I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate this. Uh, <laughs> you, you will separate. Apparently, it won't, dude. There you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Number 58. She's, uh, if you don't know who she is, she's from 30 Rock. She is the, um, what do you call it, the yeah. secretary of the writers and is supposed to be the personal assistant to uh, Liz Lemon. Yeah, 58. Pippa Milton. What an arse for a royal. Uh, 2012. Is she, she technically a royal? Uh, I don't know. She's a sister of a royal. In 2012, she uh, debuted uh, at number 11. Only party planners were likely to make this list. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> number 57 is... Alison Brie. Oh, I'm in love with this woman. Mm-hmm. I am in love with this. She's so cute. Look at those eyes. You get lost in those eyes for ages. I love the quote here. When I was exploring my new fact sexual lead, there was the girl or girl action, the crazy threesome with the afros and whips. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, she <laughs> debuted last year at number 77. Uh, you know her from Community, from Mad Men, and appeared briefly in Scream 4 yeah. and The Five Years. Well, she's years. jumped 20 places. Oh, well, she's fucking beautiful. Look at those eyes. You get lost in those eyes for fucking days. 56. Miranda Kerr. Mm. She's an Australian model. She let Orlando Bloom put something in her. Fuck her. Yeah, she was uh, last year. She was fifty first, so she's dropped down five places. Oh, uh, fair enough. Number fifty uh, five is Perry Edwards, who singer. Never heard of her. Uh, alongside Jay Thurwell. Oh, she's from Little Mix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number fifty four, Nicole uh, Schrodinger. Lewis Hamilton's of a half uh, pussycat doll. Mm. Eh. Number fifty three, Lana Del Rey. Terrible fucking songs, but oh, they want to make you kill yourself. But she's yeah. a decent enough singer. Debuted last year, at number twenty-seven. I wouldn't. Me neither. Number fifty-two, Cher Lloyd. Kind of would. Uh, debuted last year, at number terrible 25. songs, terrible but singer. But funny enough, kind de- of a mini version of fucking. In, yeah. a, in a mirror image to last year, she debuted last year, at number twenty-five, and, and now she's, she's number fifty-two. 52. Cool. Uh, I would purely because she's kind of like a mini version of Cheryl Cole. Fifty-one. Brittany Palmer. Ring a ding, 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 girl, girl. U- Brittany's US- UFC girl, of course. Absolutely. Uh, first time to appear in this. So, mm-hmm. there you go. Also been uh, Playboy. Well, she's only young. She's just came into it. Number 50. George. Georgia May Foote. Uh, she's an actress uh, from Coronation Street. Oh, yeah. I've seen her now and again. She's pretty hot. And uh, she was also a good chill. I never really Alison watched, Simmons. Never really watched it. Number 49. Error! <laughs> I'll turn, to, I'll turn to the big list. Number 49 is actually Scarlett Johansson. I think there's a problem with the error. Better, we better click that. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can't be telling me there's no Scarlett Johansson. Wow. Wait, 44 for Scarlett... For, is it 49? 40, 49 for Scarlett Johansson. Wow, Scarlett Joe falling down the list. I know. Number 47 is... A 48. Se- uh, 48, sorry. Samine Gibson. Never heard of her. She's Welsh. That probably explains why I've never heard of her. I really like cocky men, she says. Oh, you fucking Welsh. Number 47. Jessica Ennis. Gold. Ennis. Yeah, she's I, an athlete. Yeah, she won the heptathlon gold medal at um, the most recent Olympics in London. Number, Beautiful woman. Number 46. Lindsay Finesca. Oh, yeah. Finesca, she's, sorry. Yeah, she plays the daughter in How I Met Your Mother and the oh, yeah. little bit you see the flash or the flash forward, sorry. Yeah. Um, she's the mate, she's Katie in Kick Ass and she has a small, well, she has a role, I believe, uh, in uh, Nikita. Excellent stuff. Uh, I was just to wish I, uh, yeah, So 40. it goes 45 now. Is Rosie Huntington Whitley? I would love to say a lot of things about her, but I'm scared of her boyfriend. Yeah, 2012. Her boyfriend is Jason Statham. 2012, she was number 18. 2011, she was number one. Yep. <laughs> and 2010, 27. So. A and she's bit... best known for Transformers 4 and being the other half of Jason Statham and Rosie Huntington Whitley. Number 44 is Hetty Bywater. 
an actress uh, from England. She was in EastEnders. Oh, she plays Lucy Casualty. Beale. Yeah. Yeah, probably would. <laughs> okay, number 43 is Charlie Webster. Sports journalist. Of course, uh, yeah, I've seen her now and again. She's pretty, yeah. Okay, number 42 is Laura Trott, uh, Olympic cyclist. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, she's a, she's got a... She's very funny on... Um, she was on an episode of oh, A League of Their Own. Mm. She was very funny on that. She kept saying stupid things and it was just kind of like... She didn't mean to say it. 41. Roxanne McKee. Aha! Back in the list, are we, Roxy? They're using the same picture. You know why? Because you've not been anywhere's attention until 2008, since 2008, where you fell out of the 100. Be honest, you fell out because you were 97, which doesn't count. Right? You were Holly Oaks, you were bloody. You were in Holly Oaks, and you tried to make it big in America. What happened? You fell, you lost. So what did you do? You went to Game of Thrones and became a whore. Hmm. Uh, she appeared number 97 <laughs> in 2008, then before that was 42nd in 2007, and 91st in 2006. So, this has been the best rank she's ever held mm. in the top 100. Like I said, she became, yeah, she became a whore, that's why. No. <laughs> number 40 is Daisy Lowe. I don't, I've heard of Daisy Lowe. Yeah, it in 2011, number 29, and last year she was 13th. This year she takes a massive drop taking the f- number 40 spot. So now, number 39. Victoria Pen- uh, Pendleton. Really? Professional cyclist. Okay. She, uh, re- returning to the top 100, she only appeared in number 2009 at number 84. Yeah, she's so uh, huge. a gold winner, a gold yeah. medalist in the Olympic Games yeah. in 2012 in yeah. London, and then went on to be strictly, uh, on Strictly Come yeah. Dancing. Number 38, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fuck? This is her second best appearance, as she appeared in 2012, number 65, in 2011, she came in number 15. Oh, I'm just going to say this. Yeah. Fuck take Kim Kardashian, we'll not be making it next year, she stays how she looks now after pregnancy. Number 37, Frankie Sanford. Yeah, she's from the Saturday, she's yeah. a singer, um, I would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the lowest song she's had so far, 2012, she was 18, 2011, uh, 22nd, 2010, 4th. 2009, number 17. So, 36th. Emma Stone. Boom! <laughs> from Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, in 2012, she was number 37. In 2011, number 68. This is her best rank so far. I have, I have to admit, I do prefer her as a redhead, even though she's naturally blonde. Uh, she worked in Superbad, Amazing Spider-Man, um, Stupid Crazy Love. Um, there's a lo- endless films these days yeah. the gangster squad lots of things she but she's actually this is a new record for her so congratulations mm. Emma Stone um, number 35 Emily Attack I know Emily Attack she's from the in-between us um, she played Charlotte the one she, you know, she was the one that was the you know, really fit one that went with the weird one Will and number 34th is Jennifer Aniston. Still rocking it, eh, Jen? Yeah. Still rocking it. We haven't got time to go through her numbers, do we? No, there's a lot of them. <laughs> She's been rocking it since 96. So number 33 <laughs> is... Yes! Daenerys! Yep. Debuting onto the top 100 at number 33. Daenerys Targaryen of Game of Thrones, the, the mother of dragons. You better believe it. 32. Selena Gomez. I still have a pass and I'll say it again. I probably would. Debuted last year at number 75. Probably because it would piss Justin off. And number 31. Uh, more than Emily Watson. Really? I Emma know, Watson, I sorry. Know, but she was well too high. Zoe Duchanel at oh. number 31. <laughs> Debuted last year at number 17. Let's keep bringing them to me. <laughs> well, obviously we're getting higher on the list. Oh yeah, let's keep them up. Number 30. Kimberly Walsh. Yeah, my favourite one out of Girls Aloud. Always has been. Last year was number 37th. Uh, this is actually the best rank she's ever had. By like what? What? One? No. Um, the lowest rank, sorry, the, uh, the highest rank she's ever had before this was number 37 last year. Oh, so we're rocking so 29 she was, now. She, no, she was number 30. Oh, number 30, so, so she's 7. No, oh, she's yeah. getting there. Number 29, <laughs> Laura Whitmore. I know her, she's there. Uh, she used to do uh, MTV, and I think she yeah. did some other things. She right? debuted last year number 87. Huge jump for her. Yeah, I think she got cut off recently. Number 28, Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah, I would. Last year was 54. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is not her best rank. Her uh, best rank was number 20 in 2011. I would because she seems to have done the whole, like, uh, growing yeah. up thing these days. Number 27? Yep. Christina oh, Hemsworth. baby, don't kill me. 
This is her highest rank. Her lowest rank before this is two. So it was 77th in 2009. She now is 27. Stop it. Sorry. She's a natural blonde, dyed her hair red since she was 10. You wouldn't tell looking at that ginger mustard. She mocking. says, I didn't pay for it to happen. I didn't get a boo job of who I am. And I do love the girl. She's in, uh, in Firefly ER Cold Case without trace. But most ma- mainly, she's known for her role as Joan on Mad Men. Number 26 is uh, Millie McIntosh. Oh, she's from um, Chelsea. Yeah. Debuted last year at number 15. Oh, okay. She's made from Chelsea. Number 25. <laughs> So the top quarter. Oh, there we go, Mercedes. Jennifer Mercedes McQueen this from is, Hollywood. This Hello. Is, this is the best rank she's ever had. Ding, 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 ding. Her highest rank was back in 2009 at number 38. She actually wasn't in last year's list, but this year she's made it into the I top like, quarter. At the I like five. big butts and I cannot lie. Okay, number 24. Melissa Clark. Oh, you were doing so good in your film model. Last... Last year, 2012, she was came at number 34. She's jumped up 10 spots. <laughs> uh, okay, number 23. We have Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. I love Hollywood. I do. Oh, it's Hollywood. Last She's year, the only reason to get up in the morning and put TV on, i tell you right now. Last year, she was number 24th. This year, she's 23rd. I would, and this is her best rank so far in the top 100. What I wouldn't do is to spend the morning with Hollywood. Be. I'm not talking next to with her and Phil Philip Schofield on the morning and this morning. You know what I'm saying? Twenty second. She's going out with an ugly guy. Amanda Seyfried. Oh, yeah, she's a mean girl. Who did, she was a Mean Girls. Um, she did. Um, oh, she's in, She was in uh, Mamma Mia. She's done a lot of interesting roles since Mean yeah. Girls. Last year she debuted and she debuted number seventy six. So wow. one hell of a wow. job. Number twenty first. Are you ready? Twenty first. Yep. Number twenty one. Yeah. Keely Hazel. Boom, she's back in the business. She was in last year number 8, 2010 number 5. She's uh, dropping, but she's Number 5, 2008, 3rd, 2007, 2nd, 2006, 2nd. So this is her Most, lowest yeah. rank, but 21 still. <laughs> Since 2006, it ain't a bad number to be at, you know what I mean? Mm. Right, now, number 20. Okay. So we're now in the top 20. You ready? Here we go. Jennifer oh, Lawrence. Mystique. Mystique and Katniss. Oh, debuted, love her. debuted last year number 74th was told that she had to lose weight yeah. for hunger games because she didn't look hungry enough yeah. and said no I'm not gonna, I don't want to be that type of girl and they yeah. portray that it's okay for girls yeah. to lose weight because they want to be an actress so she's uh, she has jumped I think 54 points yeah 54 54 fucking points man <laughs> number 19 Beyonce Knowles okay I give it up to Beyonce yeah. Both knows what he's doing, you know. Second highest rank she's ever had. I would have thought it'd be higher than that. No, the highest rank she's ever had is number 17. Wow, only oh, so you're missing it by two or three. Yeah, two. Okay, number 18, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Molly King. Oh, Saturday, so, yeah. oh yes. Debuted last year at f- number 14. At least she's Friday. Okay, <laughs> number 17, are you ready? Megan Fox. Still up there, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously, she was first in 2008, second in 9 and 10. 4th 2011 and 7th in 2012 so she's actually uh, dropped 10 spots 16th are you ready mm-hmm. Katy Perry at number 16 cool. that's uh, cool yeah, yeah dropped 10 spots from last year you know yeah that's still cool it's still cool but like I said, she's dropped uh, 10 points from last year. She, uh, she was 6th last year. Maybe because everyone just imagined her bang, what, thought she was sexy because she was banging someone who was a sex addict. Uh, well, that was just because she hasn't really been in the limelight, you know. Yeah, she's had a bit of a quiet year, to be fair, yeah. But number 15, Rita Ora. Oh, yeah, she's a rapper. Yeah. I see a rapper. Now, to, last year, she was number 94. Wow. She hasn't had a big year, man. She yeah, has a big year. I mean, Jay Z put her to the prime or something. So yeah, that's a pretty cool jump. Number fourteen, Rosie Jones. Uh, last year she was fourth, so a, a ten point drop. But dude, yeah, that picture, yeah, the sun is shining out of her ass. Yes. Oh, I'll, guys, I I'll, will link. To, I will. <laughs> I will link you to the FHM list, but I'm not posting these pictures up because YouTube will freak. <laughs> 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 Number thirteen, Georgie Porter. Oh yeah, she's. Uh, oh, she's oh, yeah. McQueen. Teresa, Teresa McQueen. Yeah. 
Uh, last year she was 86th. So a nice leap for her, really. Yeah, she's very fit. Number 12. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, though. Yeah, last year she was 99th. That's why she's evil, you know why? Yeah. Because you want to bang her, but you know she'll take your soul. Last year she was 99th, her lowest rank, uh, since debuting in 2009. Mm. But um, since then she's better. She's yeah. dated a Jonas, and then she's since then, and then she dated yeah. a member of the Kennedys, and then she's dated the whole of One Direction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 12th is her highest rank to date. And remember, don't go out with her because she'll sing a song about you on her album. Number 11 is Talisa Oh, wow, last year's number one. Yeah. Last year's well, number dropped one yeah. dropped ten spots. So now the top on your winner. Ten. Cool. Are you ready? Yeah. Number ten. Georgia Salpa. The model. Yeah. Oh, she's cool. Yeah. Last year cool. debuted at number five. So nine yeah, she spots. She appeared on Celebrity Big Brother apparently. Number nine. Cheryl Cole. Oh, Cheryl's back in the issue. Last, last year she was second. A drop of seven places. But, but then again, she's had like a, a quiet year. Yeah. Year. Number eight. Oh, she girls allowed. Kate Upton. Oh yeah, she's um, a model, yeah. and I think I've seen her in a few film roles as can't, well. I can't escape her on Twitter. People keep oh yeah, of her. yeah. Now she was uh, debuted last year, number twenty third. This year she's eighth. Makes no, uh, it's no surprise to me. <laughs> she's everywhere. Yeah, I've seen her in a couple of film yeah. uh, TV shows. I think number seven. Pixie Lott. I love Pixie Lott. She's just a normal girl. Highest rank to date. Last year she was 12th. This year she is 7th. She's a s- singer, but she's just a normal yeah. chick by the looks of it, yeah. you know? A leap I of, love her. Yeah, a leap of and five in, in one of her videos, she does the, the cardinal thing that get to kill us. Yeah. Knows blokes. Yeah, the drop. No. What? Long, long jumper. Yeah. Little booty shorts. Long socks. Ah, yeah. Fucking, and she's rolling around the bed all cute and shit. Yeah. You're like, damn it! <laughs> but she's jumped five spots there. Well, you know. So number six. Kelly Kelly. Yes! My girl Penny! Last year she debuted at number 56. <laughs> she's jumped 50 <laughs> points. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Geek? 50 points. Oh, I can imagine 50 points already. Are you ready? Top five time. I can imagine 50 points, you know what I mean? Number five, Kelly Brook. Wow, Kelly's still there. Yeah, well, but she's been rocking it since 1998. Yeah. And there's not... This or two or three or four yeah. or five or she, six. She was she came number eight. one in two thousand five. She missed one yeah. year or nine. She was number one in two thousand five. Uh, she is uh, so uh, number five of all the best ones she's had along with because she's been first, fourth, and fifth. And then there's been quite a few jumps. So fifth, uh, which is a jump from last year, fifteen points where she was twenty last year. I mean, she's she's been yeah. in this every year, bar or nine <laughs> since ninety nine. Number four. Michelle Keegan. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll sit and watch an episode of Curry if she appears on it. Best ranked to date last year. She was 26. Uh, the same as 2011. Right. This year, fourth. I mean, she's in uh, Coronation Street for those who don't know. Top she's an actress. three. Number three. Helen Flanagan. Wow! But I hate her. She's from Coronation Street. She was in the jungle and... She's a, just a, f- a jump of 44 points. She's a fucking idiot, though. Number two. Rihanna. Rihanna. Well, yeah, I can see that. Everyone's always this saying This is it. her best rank to date. But yeah, but she's been third like three yeah. times. <laughs> Finally, your number one. Mila Kunis. That girl knocks it out the park. Mila Kunis. Oh! First time at number one. Last year she was ninth. 2011 she was 16. 2010 she was 14th. She is the new number one sexiest FHM girl in the top one. Do you know what makes me sad though? Mm-hmm. You know what makes me sad? What? Read that second interesting fact. She dated Macaulay Culkin for eight years. Macaulay Culkin! The man who dated Michael Jackson for all six months as well. Oh dude, come on. Come on, you tell me he didn't? Yes. <laughs> Fox. He got a lot of money and I mean lots of money. Got this chick. Yeah. No wonder she wasn't put on a... The probably thought she needed a year to be washed. But also, I like this third fact. She's a huge World of Warcraft fan. Yes. Mm, 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 mm. She plays Meg. She's in uh, Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake. She's in My Dreams. She's in My Dreams. And she's in My Dreams. Uh, she's also in Ted. Uh, she voices Meg Griffin from Family Guy, which is a really bizarre. If you think about it, you have the F- FHM's well, it's the ugly sexiest be- woman in the world. It's the ugly Becky thing. <laughs> yeah, voiced by sorry, who then goes and voices a woman who's just so plain and normal. 
Yeah, I mean, but congratulations to uh, Melina. Boom, Lewis. baby, boom, boom. But with Adam not in the room, he had to go deal with a personal matter. Yeah, we actually um, hit. We've actually hit over two hours for this episode, but it's all cool. We're talking about. Well, I know our news. We went through a hundred chips. Yeah, and it's been a good show. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> so um, it's time for us to say goodbye. So on behalf of the Lord Walker One, the Pirate Pimp, the Suited Up Sith, Geek, you can say goodbye on your own. So I'm going to let you say goodbye right now. I'm fun. Funkzilla has disappeared. The boss is sitting next to me. My name is the Geek King. I am the Nasty Nerd. Well, and this one. has been Hashtag Shout. And just remember, guys, if you're feeling really down and really low, just remember, Melina Kunis just won. Boom! Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>